watching them play for this event. Uh, and I'm joined here today by Sullivan Rue. How are you doing, Sullivan? Hey, guys. I'm great. How are you? I'm pretty good. I have uh, never been to this. This is where I believe the uh, uh, Beach Town uh, Beach Town Beatdown was held earlier this year. Oh, okay. I have never been to this. Have you been? No, I haven't. Uh, I was planning on going, but it was like a, a weekend right after another tournament, and I couldn't plan it soon enough. Yeah. Yeah. Seems that fun happens. though. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know if you saw the video. Did you see much, catch much of the Inside Foose's coverage on that? Yeah, I did. I did watch. It was very, very interesting. Um, <laughs> Definitely. Once again, I'm Adam Gilson. Uh, this is Sullivan Rue. We're uh, just bringing to you, going to be jumping around the East Coast of the United States today, uh, different venues that are taking part in this world record breaking, shattering event. Uh, right now, we're in the South Florida Foosball Club in Lake Fort Worth. Some of the other places we have coming up, uh, Virginia Beach Foosballers in Virginia Beach, uh, the New York City Foosball Club in Brooklyn, and Buffalo Foosball in Buffalo. That's going to take us from 7 uh, let's see, till 9 o'clock Eastern, and then we're going to move uh, over to the West Coast around uh, 9 o'clock Eastern. Um, so, Sullivan, before uh, the stream started, we were talking – had you played much um, on the East Coast? No, I actually have not. I've never been to any New York tournaments or any, any way up there. But hopefully one day I'll make it. Hopefully one day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that was my – back when I was touring, I, the farthest – I think I told you the farthest uh, East I ever went was uh, uh, Dallas-Fort Worth. But I looked at a map, and it wasn't true. It was actually a little bit further east when I went to uh, Nationals in Minneapolis. But okay. that's it. Uh, yeah, I went there, and uh, I've, I've been pretty much everywhere, but nowhere super, super high up. I've been to Florida, Florida State. going to try to go to the Mississippi State. What is Mississippi State? Is that uh, later this year? Yeah, I think it's sort of around Louisiana State, but I'm not sure. Oh, oh okay. Okay. Yeah. So we're looking at these statistics. Um, the uh, live.koom-kickern.de has got this amazing live map that's showing everywhere in the United States that's playing right now and other parts. There's uh, Mexico and Cotopec, Mexico. There's five players playing. Um, there's Bison Billiards up in uh, uh, New York. There's just players all over the place. It's pretty an amazing uh, event to be watching. Obviously, earlier today, they were covering a lot of the places in Europe. And now we're slowly moving uh, uh, west to the west coast and then eventually i think we're going to end up in um asia and i don't know the uh, places that are going to be uh playing there that'll be participating but that should be tomorrow morning cool that's exciting so right now we're just kind of checking out looks like these are i don't know any of these foosball players that i'm looking at right now yeah, I, I can't i don't think i notice anyone either I see a lot of people uh, talking. I can't see who this guy's talking to. I wonder if I know anyone, yeah. if I know anyone else. Whoever's, whoever's running the whole thing. Yeah. So what do you, do you, do you like, I mean, you've played all over the place at this point. Like, do you like mm -hmm. going to your local draws still? Like, is that still a thing for you? <laughs> uh, it is. So they used to be in like sports bars or different, different places like that. But since COVID started, they shut it down. And so we've kind of struggled to get back into those places. But uh, there is a guy like 30 minutes from my house, Randy Stelly, and probably familiar with Isabel Stelly, who's been doing pretty well. And women, she qualified for the 19 or 18 and under like ladies singles for World Cup. Yeah, no, she's a she's yeah. a phenomenal player. And I yeah, was wondering, um, she's. I was watching her play at, um, let's see, at Nationals. 
And she has her game reminds me kind of like a variant of yours to some degree. Is that is there some influence yeah. on your part to her? Is that have you guys talked? Uh, have you coached her? I haven't. Uh, I recently. I mean, not recently, but ha- I haven't known her for that long. I mean, I know of course she shoots a push shot. We've talked about it sometimes. She has a little bit different stroke than I do, but yeah. it seems like her passing series kind of resembles um, mine. But maybe that's just also like a Louisiana, Louisiana thing. Different people have some more. But be. yeah, we, we've talked a uh, talked a little bit more and watched each other. But yeah, I actually went to a local last weekend, and they have four tables and like inside of his garage and all this and draw draw it up. We have a draw. There's a triple threat singles event, which means like you could flip a coin and then you pick if you'd rather play singles, regular singles, um, goalie wars or forward shootout. So it's pretty cool. That's neat. I've never heard of that format before. Yeah, it, it they switch it up, but we have most of the same players that come and then sometimes we'll get some from new orleans or whatever they also have locals i mean not locals but they have tournaments in new orleans that me and my dad would try to make it up up there just for something different right. they have a nice they have a nice setup so i'm curious your perspective um we're watching this stream right now and this is huge global effort for the to make this record um i believe in fact they've already broken it and right now they're working on doubling tripling quadrupling the record smashing yeah uh, you know, smash yeah yeah which is great i, I love it but yeah, um you know what it really speaks to me is this the the, the foosball community is you know like a, a family you know and yeah. and your your family is considered the foos, the first family of foosball as yeah. i heard them say on the foos talk live last sunday or the Many sunday last yeah. i'm just curious <laughs> you you grew up i mean you grew up with the foosball rod in your hand almost right like, yes is that that's exactly so what is right. it? What is it for you? Because, like, I I'm trying to I'm trying to figure out how to frame this question. Like, if if you grew up playing foosball and you were just okay and you had fun and you showed up and you maybe you know got I don't know you were just there with your family. That's one thing. Yeah. But yeah. you happen to be quite good and there's <laughs> a lot of expectation for the arc of your career. And you're you're 18 mm-hmm. now. Yes. And you just started, you just started college. This is your first week and you have like life, right? So mm-hmm. like, what is it like for you? Because this is, it's a completely different environment for for you versus the, the, the person that might've just picked it up at a bar when they were in their twenties and it was fun. Like for you, it's like, you know, everything, everything, right? So, I yeah. mean, what, what, what is that? And that's a huge question. And I'm sorry to just dump all that <laughs> on you two minutes into this, but I'm like, I'm curious what that, what it's, you know, how, yeah. What do you think about that? So people don't, um, I didn't even realize this myself because I've just played my whole life. But as people have more recently asked me questions around that or like questions, I also think it's similar when people ask me like, how does it feel to win expert singles as a girl when it honestly doesn't feel weird to me at all. I, I don't hmm. know exactly how to explain it, but it's just like, I've done this my whole life. So I have no idea what it's like to not know how to play. Like I'm, I'm talking, I know how you said a lot of people start in their twenties or whatever. Like I have no idea what that's like. Mm-hmm. I, I can remember learning, but also I really can't because I was a baby. So yeah. it's just basic. It, it's just my life now. Um, it is the most important thing. I mean, not the most important thing, but it's super important to me. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, I, I couldn't see myself not doing that. I really couldn't imagine not having this in my life. Yeah. That's for sure. So, I mean, so that begs the question, I mean, with the expectation of focus on you, mm-hmm. what is it like, you know, you now have a life. I mean, you have college, you have like, you're an adult, um, yeah. and you have all these other different kind of things going on in, in in that realm like and i know you just started college this week right yeah so so i guess you're still like learning you know how do you balance all that or is football like such a part of your core that you don't really have to it just yeah i mean it's the practicing part is of course like 
added time into my day. I have to figure out when to do that. But more recently, I haven't been doing much just because I've been on break. So I've been practicing easily. It didn't matter when. I, I always had time. But now it is kind of challenging. I mean, it's my only only my first week. So mm-hmm. I'm figuring out how to do how to do that. But my school hours aren't like they used to be. Like throughout elementary and high school, it's seven hours, seven to eight hours a day. And I get home, I have to go to dancing for three hours. I get home, I haven't eaten or showered or done my homework. So I feel like it was actually harder to fit in practice time and focus on foosball then than now. Of course, I have to get on a roll with like my college, my college stuff, just because I know we'll be more studying. But I have plenty of time. So I could just fit it in. And yeah, I think it will be a challenge now just because this college is more important than like high school or elementary school. And I have to focus more on it. So I might miss a few tournaments. I might you know, whatever, but yeah, I'm not, I'm not too worried about, uh, not too worried about that. That's good. So I, I take it you're going to Worlds. Yes, I definitely am. <laughs> and who... But that that also added, sorry, that also added stress to me because it's my second week at this new, this new place at college, my second week, and I don't know, I don't know how things work yet, and all of this. So that was super stressful to me. And it seems that like my nursing classes are super, super strict on absences. So I was like freaking out and they were like, it's not going to be an excused absence. And they were all sounding so tough and mean. And then I emailed the dean and she's like, oh, it's excused because I sent her the flyer for world. <laughs> and she's like, oh, it's excused. And I was like, thank God. Awesome. <laughs> You're like, I'm not making yeah. this up. This is a thing. Yeah. Yeah, because I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure when I talked to one of my professors, she was just kind of looking at me weird, and I'm like, I promise this is not an excuse to miss class. Like this is real. That's <laughs> so I was like, you weird. know what? I'm I'm gonna go to IFP and I'm gonna copy the link to the flyer and I'm adding it yeah. to the email. And I literally said in my email, I was like, you know, I don't know if this <laughs> this counts as a document of like proof, but <laughs> here you go. Uh-huh. Well, you know, and that's good. I mean, I'm glad that they, you, because you have to have a life. I mean, you have to do something when you're, you know, doing uh, in college, because otherwise yeah, it's course. just, why even do that? You know, it's funny yeah. you say that, because um, I, um, you know, I'm going to be there too, doing um, yeah. color commentary uh, for Inside Foos. Uh, yes. And uh, I, I told you, I'm starting, actually, my master's program starts next Monday. And, um, and I, te- I emailed my professors and they're like, hey, I'm going to miss, like, our second week of classes on Monday and Tuesday. And they're like, why? And I said, well, you're not going to believe this, but I'm going to be doing color commentary for a live streaming foosball tournament, one of the biggest in the world. And they're like, really? <laughs> I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. seriously. I sent them a YouTube link of, of one of the things that I did at Nationals or whatever. And like, okay, fine. That's good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it'll slide now. Yeah, I, I know. <laughs> this is like totally <laughs> up something like this. But uh, you will see me at Worlds doing... A lot of schoolwork and Zooming because I do still have to attend my Zoom classes. <laughs> right. Oh, you do? Yeah. Wow. So, I mean, I don't have to, but I'd rather just do it. I have yeah. one Thursday and one on Friday. So, yeah, yeah, you'll see me Zooming in the tournament room. And then uh, if I get called up, then, well, yep. <laughs> just tell there. No, yeah. you're, on table, you're on table seven. Tell them it's a pit match. You can always just like <laughs> – yeah. Uh, share the uh, the the, the inside food <laughs> the link. inside food link. Yeah, I'm yeah. definitely gonna do that. I'm gonna this text. Uh, I'm actually up in a. I'm actually up in a big match <laughs> in the pits. So if you want to watch? So um, if you're just joining us, uh, I'm Adam Gilson uh, with Inside Foos. I'm joined by Sullivan Rue, and we are uh, covering the Let's Foos World Record event that's been all across the globe, starting in Europe today. It's going to end up in Asia tomorrow morning. Um, they've already broken the record, smashed it. Now they're just looking to add on. Um, and uh, right now we are in um, South Beach, Florida, where the That's Beach true. Town beatdown was held a few um, uh, months ago. Yes. And um, I'm I'm getting word here that uh, even though we're watching, so this is this is all you know. This is about family, family foosball community, all this you know, just kind of 
we're not really calling events or any matches or anything, but from what I'm told, there's going to be a singles grudge match between some beginners here at the top Ooh. of the hour, five minutes. <laughs> These are cool. foosball players. These are foosball players, so maybe that won't be in five minutes, maybe 10, 15 minutes. An hour. Yeah, yeah, maybe an hour. Who knows? But, who knows? But, I, you know, we can uh, do some light color commentary on, on that or commentary, just kind of see, you know. And I'm curious. I, we got to know how much it is. And I don't know. Have you ever done any money matches like that? Like just put a buck on the table? Uh, I haven't, but people have, like, against me, if that counts. Against you? Yeah, as in, like, <laughs> I don't put my money but they would say, okay, I'll put 20 and you play me. Yeah. Okay. Wow. <laughs> have you, have you, oh, it uh, looks like we're getting images now from uh, Chicago where they're going to, they're setting up, um, uh, we're going to probably jump out there in our stream. I didn't see that on our little cheat sheet there, but in Chicago, uh, that's, that's going to be great. Jacob, yeah. um, let me mm -hmm. see here. Nut House. I think that's the Nut House Sports Grill. I'm not entirely sure. Don't quote me on that, but looks cool. We'll, we'll get there eventually. But um, yeah, we're getting pictures in our in our uh, chat channel here of uh, different places that are um, that are happening. So that's that's exciting. To look forward to. But yeah, I'm sorry. So so back to the grudge match. You've um or money matches. You you play people for money, but you don't put up your own money. No, I I, I try to be more. Much more than what that. <laughs> if you lose, if I if I lose, I guess they just they just keep it. <laughs> Have you ever? I it's guess their, they their walk money. away knowing they walk away knowing they beat you. Yeah, Is yeah, I guess I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, so but do you ever lose those? Uh, I haven't done too many. I don't think I have. I don't no. think so. It's been like a few years. I was younger. I remember the first time I was pretty young. And I was like, I don't know if I'm allowed to do this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I remember though. I, I won that one. <laughs> you did. Good. Yeah. Was it twenty bucks? Sorry. Was it twenty bucks? Yeah, 20? it was twenty. <laughs> oh. I'll be specific. Let's see here. I'm looking at this. I saw map. I saw Tommy Brewer walk by earlier. Ah, Tommy Brewer, the South Florida Foosball Club. Um, yes. I guess you know him pretty well, as well as one can. Mm -hmm. I um, yeah. got to know him and his, his wife, Dana, for the first time at um, Barto. Talked to yep. them for hours. Um, <laughs> how time flies by when you're having fun. Yeah, but, they're great. And I know that, I know that, the, so... Uh, Inside Foos is Keith Glenn is involved with this, the, 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 the Florida foosball scene. And I'm fairly certain knows Tommy because they have mm -hmm. a very fun um, repartee, for lack of a better word, on Facebook with each <laughs> other. So, um, <laughs> so they, they, they know each other on the table. But it sounds like both of them have been playing for a couple of years. And mm -hmm. Tommy started up this foosball club. Is, was he that Was it he that started it? Do you know? Uh, I think so. I think so. I'm not positive. Well, <laughs> apparently, he, he Tommy's going to join us in a bit, hopefully. Um, okay. Hopefully after the grudge match, or maybe even during, so he can tell us what's actually happening here. Yeah, he does. Oh. What's this? Lost the stream for a moment. Maybe they're switching over to the other... Um, um, the, the, I... the actual match. Should I ask her? Ask her. Yeah. Oh, they have their own. Um, what do they call that? I don't know if you folks at home could see this, but it switched over to the icons of the the the, the feed that we're seeing, and it looks like they have their own foosball South Florida yeah, foosball club crest. That's but cute. I can't see it. I mean, I, I know. Can't. <laughs> it's too small, but it looks cool. Yeah, it looks pretty cool. Um, if you're just joining us, if you're just joining us, this is the Let's Foos World Record event that we're covering. We're going to be hopscotching. It's like uh, New Year's Eve, Sullivan. We're going to be just hopping around once all the other streams get up and running um, all across the United States uh, this evening. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. Checking in with people that are involved in this uh, global uh, record-breaking, shattering event. Shattering. So how much have you practiced four worlds? I mean, like, do you have a table at your at your dorm? Or like, how does that work? So I'm actually living at home. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. So you, you, you My don't have college is... It's only like 30 minutes away. Oh, well, that's perfect. Yes. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's just right up upstairs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's good. Someone else is on here, I believe. Yeah, I think we're going to be moving. Uh, we, we lost the feed to uh, the South Beach, Florida. So I think we're going to be uh, checking in with Chicago here in a mo moment. Um, All right, cool. And I... Let's see here. Let's double check. Would you like to turn on your video now? Hmm. Our video? Whose video? Someone said that in the in the group chat or whatever this is. Oh, I oh, Jacob. I believe. I think. I think, and I could be wrong. I think that's Jacob Tom out of out of um, out of Illinois. Okay. And, Tommy Brewer working on it. Yeah, so they're they're working on it. Okay, so you know, folks, I appreciate your patience. We're doing something that's um never been done. It seems like every time I log in here, I'm doing something that's never been done with foosball streaming. <laughs> and um uh everything from that Austrian Garlando tournament to uh just sitting here chatting with Sullivan Rue. So I don't know. It's always you never know what's <laughs> gonna happen. Unpredictable. Um, Unpredictable. So, Sullivan, could you, while we're kind of waiting for the for the next stream to show up, what's your um your process for an event like Worlds? Is it the same as like just your basic other uh, major events or regional events, or is there something more that you put into it? So, um, not. I mean, it just depends. Like before, it was mostly the same type of practice regimen and whatever but now that i have more access to like the inside foods videos and all of this it's easier for me to watch on my downtime i'll just be watching some videos uh as many as i can not even necessarily only women's i watch men's whatever anything i can and for practicing i've been more thinking of ways to work around challenges that have been like more of my challenge challenges these past few tournaments so i've been paying attention to that more and trying to be aware of what i need to work on and what people are changing for me like changing against me basically so you've been scouting yes sort of <laughs> interesting i have to i, I have to now I've often wondered, um, you know, top players, like how much they scout um, w w looking at the tapes. I mean, it's a great resource to look at yeah. tape, and see what, what, you know, what everybody's doing. Um, but I mean, when you look at that, you're basically looking at how you would change. Um, no, not change. Uh, how do you would look at your, your game plan going into playing yeah. certain people? Is that, yeah. is that correct? Yeah, because... For a long time, I really just played. I didn't, I didn't study. I didn't pay attention to any of that, and I just would get by. And if I didn't, if I didn't win, then I just was like, I mean, I didn't even think of it. I didn't think, oh, I, I could have done this. I could have done this. So I feel like now that I'm more aware of it, I do better. And even if I lose, I still know what I could have done, or like if I did something stupid rush whatever is is the reason why right uh, i mean it's not only that though i also of course i'm practicing on the table because i've been realizing different things so i, I practice my usual regimen but I, I i add some more i've recently added some more so let me ask you this um I, so it's been a long time since i played competitively and i'm trying to and i'm slowly remembering the stuff that i used to know when i was playing at that level it is it true like it gets to a certain point where execution, being able to do a pass or whatever, becomes like secondary, tertiary to your, what you're actually thinking about when you're in the middle of a match. 
Yeah, it, it's it's like that for me. Uh, it's been like that just because I was so much younger when I was drilling everything a million times. And I'm really glad that I did that. I'm really glad that my dad trained me to do that because now I don't have mm-hmm. to really worry about it as much. So yeah, I don't even think of that. And and if it if I am dropping certain things, then I'm starting to think like, what's wrong? Like, why am I doing this? Because this is not normal. Right. Right. So because my 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 memory is is that at a certain point, if there is an issue with your shot or your pass or whatever, it's something that you should by that point, with the amount of time spent on the table, be able to adjust within at least a possession or two or a timeout. Yeah. Right. Like, and I think, and I say this because I've been talking to a lot of players again, you know, nowadays, and I tell them that, that it, at a certain point in longer is about execution. And you could see they do the whole, like the mind blown thing. Like, they're like, what are you talking about? It's, it's not, I was like, and, and it's interesting because I, mean, I told this to a, a, a local uh, player the other day, and he said, he, I, he said, I thought it was all about execution. And I was like, no, I mean, obviously yeah. you want to execute, but it's really, yeah. it's more about what, why, why are you doing what you're doing? You're painting yeah, a picture exactly. in the mind of the other player. Everything has to have a purpose. Obviously, you know, obviously the amateur beginner, those levels, you're, you're, you're thinking about that. Right. But, yeah. but uh, cause that, that's just, you're just new to it. But for players that have been playing for a long time, especially players like you that have played since they were kids, you know, mm-hmm. the fundamentals are already there. Yeah. And, and the way that I described it was, is like when you first learn how to drive, obviously you're worried about, you're checking the, the brakes and you're looking at all this other stuff. You look at the rear view mirror and et cetera, et cetera. Um, but by the, by a month or two months, maybe a year after learning to drive, those things are second nature. And I think that translates yeah. to what we learn in foosball. Yeah, it does. Definitely. Uh, because it's, it's like, I could have all the skill. Anyone could have all the skill in the world, but if you're not, utilizing it using it correctly then it's pretty pointless i mean it could get you so far i mean right but then you're gonna have to start you're gonna have to start putting in some extra work on like strategy thinking whatever right well well folks if you're just joining us this is the let's foos uh world uh uh, record event shattering how many people globally are playing at the same time i'm adam gilson with inside foos i'm joined by sullivan rue today um and we are right now in South Beach, Florida, and we're watching what I believe I'm told is a uh, grudge match, money match for uh, beginner yeah. players in the area. And we have the local uh, match behind all the football that goes on there. Tommy Brewer is with us. Tommy, are you, can you hear me? Uh, kind of. What's up, guys? Can you hear me? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. How's it going, buddy? Good. Good. We barely like barely got this thing started in time, but there it awesome. goes. Yeah, so no, there's a lot of history behind this match. Um, What's going on here? So last week, one beginner told another beginner, "Hey, I'm better than you," and then yeah. the other beginner was like, "No," and then okay. they decided to play this match. So it really goes back um, pretty far. Seven um, days, and there were a lot of fighting words that led up to it. Yes, that's definitely. amazing. It's for fifty dollars. So Oh my goodness! <laughs> yeah, that's that's not Canadian, right? No, uh, one of the one of the players is Belgium, so I'm a Belgian from Belgium. I'm not sure what they use, wow. but we have American okay. currency on the table tonight. Yes, well, that's excellent. I'm excited. So, so this has been seven days in the making of a grudge match, and could you tell us who's playing? Uh, yes, um, Luke Watson versus Alex, the guy from Belgium. Um, right. Okay. That's an interesting surname. Yeah, it is. Uh, I, I I think his last name is Jack, but that that has to okay. be like a chosen Americanized name. Chosen. Nice guy. He just started playing a couple months ago, but he played um, over there. And but it, you know, it's, he's transitioning to the tornado table. None of this stuff works. Oh. He tries to shoot a front pin, looks silly. <laughs> we make fun of him. And uh, yeah, no. So, <laughs> oh, he's the dad. He knows. Yeah. So they took. They decided to play out their grudge match to a global audience. I really respect that. Yeah, no, it is right. Put it all on the table. Let every let everyone see it. And uh, is this whoever wins? It looks like we're getting started too. Cool. Is this two out of three? Three out of five? What do we? It's three out of five. We did it uh, open single style. Three out of five ceiling nice. of eight. And since they're beginners, this has the potential to go on for like 
hours. Ten hours. Yeah, 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 this could go for a while. So is it Lucas on the left and and I've from already you, yeah from the camera angle yeah Luke on the left Alex on the right. Cool. Luke and Alex. Okay. And, and um, uh, Sullivan. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh no. If, if there is a uh, a difference between them, it's that Luke has a lot more experience um, with tournament style foosball, and so knows uh -huh. how important the five row is. So if there, right. if anything, if Luke wins, it's probably because of that. Yeah. Is this, is Sully this is... still on too? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, hi, Sully. Hello. How are you? I'm great. <laughs> Sully beat me in uh, Bardo. She probably doesn't remember, but I hold a grudge. What do you mean I probably don't remember? You beat me first. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and he who remember. laughs first laughs loudest. I don't know. I'm trying to. Yeah. Right nice. side. I think, I think Groucho Marx said that. Yeah, someone smart said that. Someone, no. someone intelligent. So yeah. wait, what happened? What did you guys, let's have, I want to get meta here. Let's have grudge match over grudge match. So, who beat who, when, and where at Bardo? Okay, what was okay. so, yeah, Bardo... So, I think single. we can agree that it's actually who beat whom, but moving past that... Oh my um, gosh, dude. <laughs> this is a world record-setting event for foosball. Let's not get persnickety, okay? Okay, fine. He That's beat fine. me. He beat me, so... He for what, first. for third? No, 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 no. You be okay. Let me let me let me tell the story. Yeah, set the scene. Yeah, yeah. Tommy. I'm a, I'm a drinker. Let's have. <laughs> yeah. can remember. Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay. Look at that spray. So, wow. Um, we. I don't really remember when I played him in expert singles. I won for my page, and then I played him next round. I think that's where I was. And yeah. we. It was both of our first matches of the day. Mm -hmm. I think it went. I believe it went third game, and he beat me. Probably like five two in the third, maybe. Um, Somewhere. Wow, you remember the score? Jeez. Of course. <laughs> yeah, that's what makes her good. She remembers. Yeah, no, a memory. Yeah. And yeah. then. And then uh, we met each other again after that, and yeah. she was not having it. So. I was not. <laughs> was it? Was it brutal? No. Well, I think it went to meatball, or it went to at least third game. Maybe. Yeah, I, was... Maybe that's just like a nice way for me to remember it. But it wasn't like. <laughs> no, it wasn't bad. Yeah. I felt hey, like um, I was slowly drowning. It wasn't a tidal wave. It was like a toddler fell in a hot tub, more kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Wow, what an image. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just while we're on the while we're on the topic, um, I, I'm curious. Did did you um, were you that fired up in your head, Sullivan, because you thought you shouldn't have lost to begin with, or were you just wanting to win in general? Um, I was prepared. I oh, good. like I was telling you earlier, I was actually game planning and thinking of what I could do to change my wow. game. Uh, yeah. So I did that, and it obviously worked in my favor, and I was yeah. also fired up because I wanted Expert Single so bad. So bad. <laughs> and like, I, I will text my dad or something and be like, so do you think I could uh, get Expert Singles? And he'll say no. Like, just trying to get me fired up, and so I was like, <laughs> okay, I gotta, prove, I gotta prove him wrong now. <laughs> And our game plan was apparently to score four out of the back in the <laughs> third game. So like, off do you remember? Point. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. That I, I know. He's try he's trying to. Yeah. <laughs> That's a, yeah. yeah. Collectively, the things you remember. Yes. I also texted your dad, and he was rooting for me. So there. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love it. Uh, yeah. No, it was, and it was actually the best possible result because who did you play in finals? Uh, do you remember? I played Tito, uh, Carlos. Suspes. Uh, Martinez. One of yeah. one of the Cespedes offspring. It was right? yeah, it was Carlos's son. Carlos. Yes, and I wasn't gonna beat him, but Sully was destined to beat him, so it, it worked out really well. <laughs> and I was hey, already um, really happy with my third place. Like that was, I was stoked. Yeah. <laughs> hey, wait, what do you what do you rank, Tommy? Um, I'm barely an expert in singles and barely an amateur in doubles. Wow. Barely. Yeah. Besides. What just what just happened? Oh, I believe did Luke just take game number one? I believe he did. He looks happy, so yeah. I'm outside. Yeah. Inside it's Oh okay, you're not there. Is it so no, just out of curiosity? Not... Is it twenty five each or fifty each? Playing for? Sorry, what's that? Are they playing for, are they did they put down twenty five each or fifty each? So they put down fifty each. Ooh. Wow. Mm -hmm. Getting intense now. Yes. Goodness. Big bucks. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's a lot of money right there. I mean, that's like four nice meals. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what I can nice. tell, I know both these guys pretty well, and no matter who wins, all it means is that everyone who's playing is going to get shots, right? Like, <laughs> that's right. where the money's going, so... I got that sense that the 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 orbit of uh, the uh, South Florida foosball kind of move like orbits around the bar. Yeah, so, I mean, uh, the, any given player from Tampa can beat any given player from South Florida foosball club on any given night. But we will have a lot more fun, and <laughs> yeah. we spend way more money on Ubers. So I feel Bye. like we can. Uh, oh, that's good. You have to have yeah. fun responsibly. Yes. Exactly. So, yeah, I mean, you might have seen, I haven't been watching the match at all because I have the phone to my ear. But you may have noticed that uh, Alex, has, Alex has just started working on his five row. And he's uh, yeah. been coming over to my house and is going to be redoing my bathroom in exchange for some, uh, hey. some training on a five row. Great. Worth it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's awesome. So, I love it. You should tell him that his if he wants to get his his euro pin better, he needs to stop using his entire body. He does kind of. It's all in the hips, right? Like the hips it don't lie. Well, I mean, the problem. No one is going because yeah, there's a, there's a strong pivot. Right. Well, the problem is is that there's nothing wrong with doing that when you start actually purposely trying to throw in fakes. But his his technique is not. It needs to be like Sullivan. Sullivan, your push shot. I mean, the push shot and a front pin are two different things, but the technique yeah, yeah. Is, is similar in that. You want to be doing an, uh, an economy of motion, and Sullivan, yours, you have a phenomenal technique for your push shot. And when you start using so much of your body, you lose the economy of motion, and then you, things that should be hidden are gone. Yeah. Yeah. The, the only thing that moves on Sully's push shot is her hair. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Got the hair right. flip going. No. Yeah. No, it's like a hair. It's like a shampoo commercial. <laughs> everyone, everyone always says something like that. I swear. Yeah. Or yeah. the hair flip. We're not we're not up there winning, so we gotta like say something. <laughs> this is this is good defense right there in the middle. If somebody's not showing you that you are gonna be going anywhere long and raceable like that, that's kind of a smart D. And yeah. this is Luke. Luke is Luke is the more experienced player, correct? Oh. oh, that was smart. I think he was going for a two to the three bar pass, actually. Yeah. Jar. <laughs> that was a one hundred percent jar. Do I need <laughs> to get in there and ref? Oh, dude, you go get your shirt. Go get your stripy shirt, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Tommy, what else is going on tonight? You guys are just playing, or tell us. Uh... Uh, so we actually have three locals down, three weeklies down here, um, wow. Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. And so this is our Friday local turn, and they're at three different locations too, right? So this is our Friday, or sorry, Thursday tournament. Just kind of doing what we normally do. It just so happened to correspond to the world record attempt, so. Happy oh, that's great. <laughs> so, yeah, so we'll do um, a, a monster draw um, and see where that goes. That's kind of our standard format. A uh, severely handi handicapped monster draw. Yeah. Um, is, um, is, uh, so t tell us if, if, um, if people wanted to find out more about your club, where would they go online? And if they were in the area, where would they expect to go? Like, what, you know, uh, we're on How Facebook. We have a page uh, for South Florida Foosball Club, and um, there's like five moderators on it, so it's a Good. pretty quick response. Even if you're like, you know, we get messages at like four in the morning for some reason, and we, we generally respond pretty quickly. <laughs> nice. Um, and yeah, we're, and we actually are. We'll be putting a fourth night together this week at another location. So oh, wow. yeah, we'll have some updates to make to to it soon. And are you planning for an, another beach town beatdown next year? Is beat that... down. Yes, we have already started planning for it. Um, nice. Changing the layout a little bit. Um, we did. We cut it off at eighty this year. I think we want to cut it off at a hundred next year, and probably leave it at that for a while, um, just to keep it manageable. Um, and by manageable, I mean me not stressed out. Right. <laughs> I like yeah. to have Sullivan, fun too. Sullivan, are you going to go to that? Yeah, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try my best. I'd like to. Is it, is it, to. Is it uh, invitational? It's not invitational, um, but everyone who went uh, last year or this year, still this year, everyone who came this year will get grandfathered in, so that oh, they cool. they'll get first choice on the spot. So of eighty people, 
we expect like 70 or so will like pre-register when we offer that. And then it'll be 30 spots or so. And we actually um, filled it up to 80 pretty quickly, almost within two and a half, three days this year. Um, wow. Yeah. We, we probably could make it a, a really huge tournament, but I, we don't want to. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, why, that's, that's why? still in the way. Is this more manageable? More manageable, more fun. We like, uh, big tournaments are cool, right? But I don't want to, like, where we're at now is uh, in our downtown area, which is by the beach. There's a bunch of bars. There's always live music. I don't really want to move it out of this environment and put it in like a hotel lobby, right? Um, there's enough of those tournaments. There's lots of them. I go to them. I'm going to one next week. I'm going to be stuck in a hotel for, what, five, six days. Um, but we just kind of want it to be different where That's it cool. feels like 50% party, 50% foosball tournament, you know? Yeah, that's hey, a good everybody. idea. I'm a random call-in guest, and I'd like to know if Mark Torres is the greatest commentator of all time. Or the I'm greatest. Definitely. Let's, yeah, no, I... let's, let's set the goalposts, dude. Where's where's greatest land on reality? Put it down there. It's a Don't really good Mark now. Torres impression, Jim. Yeah, Jim. Uh, <laughs> hey, uh, dude, so, I heard you guys talking about the beach town. Man, that tournament is yeah. awesome. I so, still have a hangover from watching it. Sully, it's I epic, don't, right? Sully is uh, Sully is the greatest, and she doesn't like party. But the food, Sully, the food, I will buy you. <laughs> the food is so good. I'm not kidding, Perfect. man. Not really. Ate, oh my gosh, we yeah. ate. I'm, I I so, ate more. Oh my gosh. Go ahead. So if you're just joining us, this is the Let's Boost World Record event. Uh, we're right now in South Beach, Florida. Uh, South Beach, Florida Football Club, and we just got joined by our friend and colleague Mark Torres. Mark, what's up? You did some earlier today, right, in Europe? Yeah, yeah. Wow, it was amazing. Like, Ulrich tournament, Bonzini tournament, a um, couple Leonhard tournaments. Um, it was so fun. It was, uh, you know, we talked a lot about community. And this is a, a celebration and a global event. It's really, really a great time to see people coming together from everywhere to participate in this. Super fun, man. Awesome. That's awesome. So right now, what we're watching is um, this match started a week ago between these two players. We got Luke on the left and Alex on the right from Belgium. They're playing for fifty bucks. This is where? What, what country are we in? Florida. Florida. Oh, Florida. Right, we're in the country of Florida. Country we're, of Florida. we're in your hangover location, Mark. <laughs> what are you talking about, man? I was I was super good that weekend. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so they're playing for how much? What are they doing? Fifty bucks each. Wow. Hundred dollars. Yeah. Sull Sullivan said she's never played for um anything more than twenty bucks, and she didn't even put any money down. <laughs> Wait, so that got you correct. Back. Sorry. I got you're, you're in college now. I feel like you should be winning bar tabs at the gym. Um. Uh, me and my dad are actually going to go try and uh, hustle some people soon. Nice. <laughs> That'll yep. not be difficult. It'll be difficult for here's. It'll be difficult for your dad to pretend like he doesn't know how to play. That's the yeah. problem. Even yeah, if he does something definitely. that he tries to look foolish, it still looks damn just, good because yeah, of the skill set. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I got so, my so you, that, like, how so? does not participate in the hustle or he doesn't like the hustle. I shouldn't say I got lectured. I was just told that he never does that. <laughs> There's a, uh, a college bar with a bunch of foosball tables by us and we'll go every once in a while and play some money matches with those guys. And he's like, mm. I just can't do it. I feel bad. <laughs> yeah, there's a college. There's a there's a bar by my college. They have a table. We have to go yeah, soon. And I mean, like, that makes sense. Really? If you're Tony, right? Like, that's, that's, that's overkill, right? Like, he should feel bad. I, <laughs> I, I shouldn't feel bad. <laughs> no, no, you shouldn't feel bad. I think that's part of, like, you know, your evolution as a player. But for somebody like Tony, no. But he also, that just might be a personal thing. Like, Mark, I mean, I think that, that for Tom, Tony, he's just, like, a good guy. Mark, if you had Tony's skill set, what would you be doing at bars? Would you be just, like, destroying everybody? 
I'd be try. I'd be trying to uh, get the lease. Like I'd be trying to like take over the place. I'd be. It would be horrible. Empty yeah. pockets of old ladies. Just all kinds. Nice. Of nice. Oh my god, that's the name of my high school band. Empty pockets of old ladies. <laughs> I love it. He really is a, like a benevolent champion in that respect, right? Like he is. He could be a much bigger. He's entitled to be a bigger jerk than he is. Yeah. No. He's. <laughs> yeah. It's amazing. He's like the anti Jose Canseco. He's coming Wait, along. Wait, is that is. does that even make sense anymore? Well, you know what, you guys, I, I don't have a problem saying it. I don't have. Maybe Sully may remember. Tony has come a long way. Tony was an angry champion at eighteen. Yes. And he's he has come a long way, like a long way. So, so I've so, heard. Yeah, yeah I know. I knew him. That? You said Tony was an angry champion before you were born. Oh, right. you... Yeah, when you were when you were well, an well, I've, I've heard you were an infant, and Tony wore jinkos and was pissed. <laughs> right. You say jinkos? I'm just guessing, right? Like it just seems. What's probable. the jinkos? Oh. Slowly, we did. We did. We talk about this. You just started college. Tell us about it. How's it going? Yeah, it's my first week. Um, uh, I'm getting used to. Like walking around, which I was worried about that initially, but then once you're I not, got to campus, I not wor- not worried about it anymore. You know, uh, comfortable like walking around. Really no, I mean it wasn't that, but the campus is really big, and it's a oh. big change from yeah. my last school. And I was nervous that I'd get lost or something. I don't know, because I'd walked it, I practiced it like with my friends, but never alone. But that wasn't a problem for me. Uh, of course, the classes were weird because it's all on you, like all mm-hmm. on you, absolutely by yourself. Um, so I haven't really adjusted to the school part of it yet, just because I don't know what to expect. But at least I know that nobody knows what they're doing. So that makes yeah. me feel a little better. So at this point right now, I've just been pretty much overkilling it and studying so much extra, like reading whatever, just so I can get ahead. And uh, after the first exam, I'll be better off. I'll know what I'm doing. So I'm looking forward to getting over with the first exam so that I know what to look for in the future. Sullivan Rue already has a game plan for how to do college. It's phenomenal. <laughs> well, I, I got to tell you, man, I got to tell you this easily. I know your parents. You are as prepared as anybody has ever been for college. Anybody. And no matter who you yeah. come across, they're more scared than you. They're more <laughs> more anxiety than you. They're less uh, prepared than you. So you're going to do just fine. I hope so. I have to ask the high school teacher question. Like, what, what are you majoring in? I'm uh, nursing. Awesome. Oh, yeah, that's nice. That's a good one. Good. Good job. Yeah. yeah. And I'd like to go back to school. Good after, answer. After graduating, he will. If you change your mind and want to be an ophthalmologist at any point, eye surgery, or a gynecologist obstetrician, I'm very well connected. So if you change your mind, I'm there for you. But, the weirdest uh, flex I've ever heard in my life. Yeah. I don't even think that counts as a flex. But I got that, okay. I got that OBGYN hookup. Heck yeah. So, uh, <laughs> folks, if you're just joining us, uh, we're at the Let's Foos World Record event here. Uh, we're right now in South Beach, Florida, Foosball Club. Uh, we're joined by Sullivan Rue, Tommy Brewer, who mm-hmm. runs the club down there, and uh, Mark Torres. Tommy, how long has this club been in existence? Dana says hi. Hi, who is this? Dana. Hi, Dana. Hi. Up, Dana. Hi, Inside Foos. <laughs> hi, hi, Dana. Mark and Adam. And this hey! Is, and this is Sullivan. She just walked it. Okay, what? that's it. <laughs> yeah. She, she will not want to be on this at all. Okay. She's <laughs> yeah. not, is she not like... Does she not like people? She's, people? She's yeah. Does she not like people? Like what? Oh. Yeah. Okay. She, I mean, she just is not like. If I was like, give a speech, she would say no. Right. It's, it's not her thing. <laughs> I'm an introvert, and I love giving speeches. My Do you speech? really? What? Oh, well, I, I mean, love she's talking. Also in front of people. less narcissistic, right? Like so. <laughs> I don't get what your aunt. I don't get that. Are you saying that she's? Oh. Oh. Ouch. Well, Sorry. I didn't follow. No. What? I didn't connect the dots. Oh, no. No. He's using words that are big, and I don't know. He it's corrected a, my grammar a... earlier because he's one of those people. So I don't Excellent even know. Excellent I heard this you a... correct meteor and comet earlier, like when I was watching some national Yeah. Search. 
<laughs> yeah, that's what I do. Cause, but that's what I. I but it wasn't it wasn't what somebody said. Are you okay? What just happened? <laughs> he's he's falling through the mouth, center of the earth. Heavy, he's a heavy mouth breather. Oh wow! He's a heavy mouth breather. What do you have, like baleen in your mouth? What is that sound? I can't tell you. Me? The meteor. Yeah, there was just some weird. Yes, feedback. yes you. No, the meteor. The meteor thing was that was just a general comment. I wasn't criticizing somebody for how they spake. Spake. How they spake. 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 <laughs> Anyways, hey Mark, could you tell us? Because um, you were watching the the, the European uh, uh, segment earlier today, what's what's it like? Was there a lot of different tables going on, like from stream to stream, and place to place? Yeah. Uh, yes, they were all over, like London playing on Tornado, Ulrich in Austria, lots of Leonhardt in Germany. Germany really took off with this thing. I think to, yeah, I think we have 30 locations ourselves that we're going to, 31 now maybe, that we're streaming through. And uh, people are excited about this. So, you know, w watching the table play was really interesting because you realize that, I, I, I believe, the rules, like five-bar passing, they, they're all from the U.S., those rules were created here, and the styles ultimately, like brush passing, if I understand the history correctly, all that was created in the U.S. and migrated to Europe. Yeah. Huh. All right? Well, that's interesting. So, that's kind of the reverse. Yeah. Uh, that's interesting. That, yeah, well, it is. I've, I've watched some of the Italian style of uh, foosball. What do they, I, they have a special name for, like two feet or two legs or? Yeah, oh, yeah, the uh, football. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Football, yeah. Yeah, that, the, yeah. yeah, and it's. But, it's wild. Insanely different, right? Like, it is. So, so, did you play on that, Sullivan, when you were out there? The uh, the other table, the special one or whatever? This got the two, yeah, the two legs for the man. And it, oh, and then they switched the, the guys around. Is it's like four, about? yeah, there's like four men on yeah, the three bar. Yeah, so uh, the... I, on, on the first day, I was like, okay, I'm just going to see what it's like. It's funny. But then I was like, maybe this is not the best idea at World Cup to be practicing and playing on a table that is so not like the same setup so i didn't want to mess my game up i didn't get to play on it too much there's a Sad story about that table. For it, though there's a story about that table in frederick uh so klaus the, the president of the german federation tells me the story he saw it up close the best player on that table he challenged Fred, uh, played frederick for money and wiped the floor with him then he challenged frederick and jamal by himself and wiped the floor with him then he challenged them one-handed and wiped the floor with them. Wow. So this guy, yep, crushed Frederico and Jamal one-handed on that table. So Wait a minute. One on, one on two with one hand? Yes. That's, well, that's wow. how Klaus tells the story. So I would tell you this, possible? that um, it's a special skill. I've heard stories Definitely. about that table, man. You don't want to mess with those guys on that table. Trevor, Trevor got a hold of that table, Trevor Park in California, and he got rid of it. He goes, I can't do this. So <laughs> you can't. No, you, you <laughs> truthfully can't. Does anyone know what it's called? Like we keep calling it that. It's table. called a. It's two, a foot. Gosh, I can't remember. Um, hold on. Four. It, it was the competition was called like a four leg, something. There was literally a whole uh, World Cup division for that. And you know who else is who was good at it? The Spain juniors. Mm. Yeah, I just remember that they won that. I remember being not impressed, but like just bewildered, like something beyond yeah. impressed, impressed oh, yeah. and awed. something beyond impressed. Yeah, beyond impressed. Well, it's it's alien. Yeah. It's like it's a, it's an alien style of play because where the men are, it makes how no fast sense. it is. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Like really well, trippy. For, for us, to them, obviously, they grew up much like well, Sullivan yeah, yeah, did, yeah. growing up playing football. No, you know so, what? I'm a yeah. big fan of xenophobia. I'm a big yeah, fan of xenophobia. I so I know. Um, it, I've had breakfast with you, so I know. Yeah. <laughs> That uh, I I didn't know that, but good to know. Oh, <laughs> like ha Tommy. By the way, half hour ago, um, Adam asked you about the history of Lilo Street Food Bar, and we just forgot about his question. I don't know if that uh, has any. You have any insight okay. on the? Oh, the restaurant? It's been here for a couple of years, but like the foosball club. Yeah, it's it's been here longer, I guess. Uh, so we, I think the club's been around for like five years, maybe. I've only been involved with it for, actually, maybe six years. I've only been involved with it for four years. Dana and I started playing maybe four years ago and, and found it. 
um, and then just got really involved in it and helped, you know, spread it. We bought some tables and um, put them in some other locations and have just been kind of helping promote it. Um, but yeah, there were maybe when we stumbled across it, there were maybe 10 to 15 people who came out every week and played foosball. Um, no one knew what passing was or a pull shot. There was actually one guy with a pull shot. Oh, we have a winner. Who won every week. Hey. Thank you, Sullivan, for, for giving yeah. us the update. Who oh, won? Recognizing the really foosball happening. <laughs> the grudge match had to have gone to Luke, right? Yeah, the, the one on the left. Luke, yeah. Yeah. Well, Good. that's no surprise because um, Alex obviously is still working out his uh, three bar and his yeah. two bar. But, you know, that's how we learn by doing. That's what I always tell myself. And I love his fashion sense. So, Definitely. I like that look. Good look. <laughs> Tommy, go tell him I like the way he dresses. Tell him you like, you like the way he loses? No, dresses. dresses. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Dresses. No, don't say that. You, That's part of losing. Class down here. If you're grumpy or sad afterwards or get mad, we, we make right. fun of you until you're done with that. Yeah. Right? No, right. No, that's the way it's supposed to be. Yeah. We really try to disabuse people of like cockiness yeah. or emotions uh -huh. or that sort of thing. I love because, that. Yeah. Uh, I, what is this? Uh, it, a cult? It drags down. Yeah, it is a cult. Yeah. It's okay. A cult. Just wanted to know. Yeah. Making sure. Oh, wow. That's yeah. Well, that's good. You have to have your angle. <laughs> you have some. Uh... Yeah. Hey, who won? Luke. <laughs> Oh yeah, nice. you were right. Luke won. He just walked out. Is he? Victorian. Hey, can you can you inter interview him real quick for us? Tell yeah. him not to, hey, to curse though. This is this is not cable. Get interview. Hundred dollars now. Yeah, ask him how. Where is he going to go with that hundred bucks? Yeah, we're going to Disney World. Plan. Adam, Mark, and Sully. Not going to Disney World. Hey, Adam, Mark, and Sully, how's it going? Yeah, here's Luke. Straight Great. victorious, glowing with hey, victory. Luke. Luke, how did that how's feel to win that match? How did it feel to win that? How did it feel it to win that match? Uh, Alex is a newer player. He um, yeah. he's grown really fast. He's getting really good really fast. He's got a table already at his house, and so he's trying to call out some of the uh, the the oh. middle middle level players. He's not calling Tommy out yet, so he called me out, yeah. and I just uh, you know it was a fun. It was a funsy. I think we only had a hundred bucks on it or something. So only a hundred bucks. I um. Dude, all I hear is all I hear is you smashed the beginner. That's all I hear. I smashed the beginner. That's all I hear. <laughs> hey, I'm a beginner too. Oh, we're about to get paid up. Oh. Oh my god. He has so much money that well, so he, yeah, did, he, can, he can, he's he's can consider Tommy. He called Tommy a middle level player, so I guess that's where we know his skill set's at. That is my so, skill set. Yeah. I, I, I'm oh, my middle okay. level player just at him. <laughs> what? Um it was, Anyways. Uh, I bask in mediocrity. It's great. Yeah. I idle in mediocrity. It was awesome. That's awesome. So was it how many matches or how many games did it go? Uh, it went four. We were doing okay. three out of five. And did you, uh, did you at all yeah. feel like there was a challenge or? Oh, definitely. Yeah. I mean, he, yeah? he's got some really good stuff out of the back. Um, but uh, Coach Tommy uh, took me over to his house on Monday night, and he showed me a little bit different of his zone that I was working with. So I think he maybe only scored one or two out of the back on me. That's yeah, what I, I was meant. Yeah, I noticed that. Oh, wait. Yeah, I, I, saw that. His, his, yeah. I learned the importance of having a zone for yeah. the back at the Bardo. Zones are Sully. <laughs> 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 we learn by doing. Hey, Sully, congratulations Wait. on that expert singles win that you beat Tommy. Thank you so much. <laughs> me after me. I mean, congratulate her on beating the guy who's better than you. All right, are we going to start <laughs> Oh, we got to get started on yeah, the tournament, guys. So I, oh, okay. I well, Tommy, thanks for joining us. Really appreciate it, man. No problem. It was fun. You guys, uh, this is, I'm looking forward to watching it. Is it all going to be on the website? No, this is just my own private collection. Oh, yes, good. it's going to be up. It, yeah, it's all up there. We'll, we'll get it for you, bro. We'll archive. Yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll, yeah. No, it'll we'll be up there. You, but yeah, man. Black, I'm looking to see what everyone's doing all over the place, especially some of the German stuff. Yeah. Check check 4chan, it'll be on there. But anyways, man, yeah, we'll 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 be we'll be uh, checking in with you guys. I think throughout the night. I think because um, yeah, gonna we're we're just about to start our our monster, so there'll be lots of oh other nice games in there. cool Some faces that you'll recognize. And... Cool. All right. Okay, and, and thanks, Luke, for uh, talking to us too. Appreciate that. Yeah. Heck yeah. Anytime, guys. Yep. All right. Bye. Later, y'all. Bye bye. Well, if you're just joining us, folks, we just watched a. Grudge match between some beginners.
50 bucks each. Uh, <laughs> the more expensive. That's what they said to their beginners. So yeah, I thought they played they played decently for quote unquote beginners. So yeah, I don't consider um, them beginners. No, I wouldn't either. Um, definitely, I don't know. I'm not here to rank. I don't know, but they definitely played well, and it was for 100 bucks. So I don't play for anything more than I don't know a drink. So, but uh, well, this is the uh, Let's Foos World Record event. Uh, we are right now in South Beach, Florida. I think we're going to be looking at some other. Um, live streams from maybe chicago soon i'm not entirely sure but it's been really fun just kind of watching this whole community to come together globally and do this um sullivan what are your thoughts so far yeah i think it's pretty cool i mean all these people like you said getting together just for this event uh it's cool to see also that it's on a live stream we get to watch they're sending pictures in the in this group chat like you said that we're in and um uh, cool setups like they have four bonzinis in, in one area and then southern ones in this cool bar yeah i think, I think it's also yeah the, the the bonzini was in um i think in virginia beach was that virginia yeah yeah that's and, what you said and un unfortunately we lost the feet to that um but it was at, at somebody's house and it looked really cool because there was huge fish up there um, yeah there was we're also joined by mark torres mark you've been on this all day um you just got to see some south and this does this place give you memories watching i'm this telling you man if i can go to, I, I want to go to i want to go to two tournaments <laughs> next year i want to go to the, the world frog. cup and i want to go to the um no i want to go to this one i want to go to the beach town beat down uh, like two frog life would be two well i'm probably gonna end up going to five i went to five already this year uh but um this tournament is super cool i mean it, it's a it's a walk to the beach and oh, wow. the food is a, i keep talking about the food like a like um i don't know I, I like the food's just great great time great vibe it's a different a different type of tournament it's very very like you the people sold their timeouts to each other it was like it was like anarchy like chaos in the most fun of ways um they're loud over there so i can see why you would like it though because that that really fits in with your whole joker mentality yeah um I, yeah, I dig that. But no, and I, I, I agree. I, I really want to go to that next year. I would love to go to that, um, the Frog Life tournament. Actually, I think what really is happening is, is that I'm starting to see more foosball than I've ever seen in my entire life because of what Inside Foos is doing, showing us all this regional stuff. And I'm excited. I want to go, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me too. What are your plans next year, Sully? What are your plans this year? You got Tornado Championships. What else are you doing, Sully? Uh, like tournaments, you mean? Yeah, is that it? Is that uh, it? With that? How's it go? Wait, what? Wait, wait. After Tornado. What's after Tornado? I don't think that there's... Wait, is there any tournaments this year after this? Yes. Oh, my gosh, yes. There's Louisiana State. Nice. Yes, right? Um, there's Colorado, yeah. Colorado State, too. There's oh, Colorado uh, State, right? In, in November. Yeah. So, so yeah. Uh, Louisiana State, second week of October. And I'm actually going to miss half of it, unfortunately. Um, Why? So I got chosen as the Grand Marshal of the Children's Parade for the Rice Festival. Congratulations. I remember that. Thank you. <laughs> awesome. Yes. So cool, man. Because Crowley is the rice capital of the United States. So we had that festival every year. Uh, so, yeah, I got chosen for that. And I have a bunch of things I have to do, uh, you know, so including attend a parade on Saturday. So I'm going to be showing up Saturday late. But Mary mm -hmm. luckily moved the women's events just for me. Wow! So, wow! Yeah, that's when you know you have cachet is when when, when <laughs> people are wow. I can't so, even get wow. I get to go to that, uh, and I'm gonna be able to play in pro doubles. I'm playing with uh, Corey Taylor. Uh, mm -hmm. I might be able to play open doubles. I'm not sure. Obviously, I'm gonna just play everything I can since I'm showing up late. Um, then Michigan State's the next weekend. I'm not gonna go to that. I just know it's the next weekend after Louisiana. I'm going to try to go to Colorado. just depends on my school and whatever. I I'd like to go to that. I think the last time I went to Colorado State, I was like 10, and I went to the zoo oh, really? like half the time. <laughs> um, I think that's it for the year, right? Yeah. Those I, I can't. There might be another one, uh, a super secret tournament that we're not going to mm – -hmm. Until it gets really? done, until it's finished in design, until it's finished in um, execution, I won't say a word about it. But I Sully, am. it is is a tournament you're going to want to play. All right, it is a tournament wow. you want to play. So we'll, we shall see if it happens. I am yeah. tiddly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I have not been tiddly in years. 
none of the none of the dates for next year have come out. Sadly. No, I haven't seen anything. I and I was wondering if they were going to do a Hall of Legends up in the Pacific Northwest, but I don't think that's happening this year. Yeah, um, I'd like to. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to add any. The only tournament I might add is Colorado and the Beach Town. Maybe. Yeah. Beach Town. I'm going to see. Beach Town. I don't, I don't go to that. I, but yeah. is it not? It's in, it's held in a sauna though, right? Like, or, isn't what? it? No, not true. They got AC in there. You go outside. Oh, they do. It's a sauna. Okay. You go outside. Yeah. Inside, the AC is very, very good. Here's the thing about the beach town that's completely ironic. So uh, hmm. they got this incredible foosball club. That's very. It's, yeah. a, it's unique. There's nothing else like it in the United States. They share. It's like a pro- profit share. There's really no profit. It's like an equity share where they buy tables together. They buy parts together. They share everything. They um, all maintenance expenses. There's no profit for anybody. It's like this really, really uh, well-designed social structure. And then they got this tournament that's limited that closes signups in like 10 hours. So again, they're going to end up with this really, and it's very popular and it's super cool. They're going to end up with this elitist tournament. Like people are wow. <laughs> super elitist where you got to sign up. Because everyone wants to go. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, because yeah. that's what he said. He said that they were yeah. going to try to open it up to 100 players, and they had 80 that are all going to get grandfathered in. And I was like, "Oh man, that's going to be like yeah. people are going to be uh, people are going to want to sell their their tickets just yeah. to let other people in because I want to go. I mean, actually, I don't really want to play, yeah. but I just want to go hang out. It's going to be but, uh, man. But that is right. what's going to happen. What? Like, there's going to be people who come just to hang out because okay. it's a good yeah. party. Yeah, I'm looking forward. Time. I'm looking. I'm looking forward to that. Well, well, folks, if you're just joining us, I know uh, it's getting closer to 6 p.m. Uh, pacific we're looking at nine o'clock eastern we're just moving across the country here we've been kind of focused on this uh let's foos world record event has been mostly focused right now on the south beach uh, florida area there has been other streams that we haven't been able to get in yet but um i'm adam gilson i'm joined by uh, mark torres and sullivan rue and we're just kind of chatting and talking about what we're seeing here and it's been great to see the foosball community come together and do this and still have a lot of tournaments left this this uh, the rest of this year um mark's alluding to something exciting that we can't talk about even though it gave me goosebumps i'm always curious whatever mark has going on up his sleeve but um all that yeah all that aside though i'm just curious as far as um the rest of the uh uh not evening goes mark do you know what we have left going on oh yeah right about a mile away a mile about an hour away from me at logan square emporium there's, a, there's another great foosball community, mostly amateurs and um, rookies, maybe some experts, very few pros. It's it's in Chicago, metropolitan area. They got a big deal going, and they're going to be joining soon. And then uh, Trevor, I think we're doing something over at Trevor Park's house. Um, they're, uh, I think they're going to stream because he has a he has like four tornadoes. What's the number? You've been there, Adam. How, what, how many tables does Trevor have? It's generally four. Um, they, they have the capability to do a lot more because he has that kind of sway there. But yeah. um, I got to tell you, the most the most fun I've had playing foosball in this past year was uh, probably at, at his house um, back in March or April. Tommy Atkinson and his wife Kathy and their son was uh, on their sojourn across the United States during that time, and they showed up there for a, a draw. Um, but it wasn't just a draw; it was the first time a lot of these players have been together again, myself included. And uh, there was just like it was a barbecue. It was just family and fun it was just the raining food and snowing drinks it was amazing i don't even know how that yeah. works in my head but it was it was fun so i'm 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 hoping i'm hoping we get to see that i'm I'm hoping we get to um tune in with them and everybody else that we've been seeing it's just been um you know a, a phenomenal experience to really you know see and, and I, I keep saying this every time I, I hop on here and do anything with inside foos but it's just been heartwarming to see the global community of foosball players become i don't want to smaller is not the right word i still haven't figured out the right way to phrase it mark but like we're getting to be more interactive with each other because of the technology that we've uh, we now have um and it's great it's just been amazing that is cool we have i think it looks like um so mark is is uh and I don't know the names very well, but is Jacob Tom who is running this the, the tournament that's about an hour away from you or the, the playing that's going on? Yeah, so, you know, I actually have some... Um, uh, let, me, let me get some notes out, man. I got some notes. He sent some notes to Ashley and me. Cool. And uh, let me talk about it. Um, so it's... Um, 
it was started by the late Richard Shepard. Rest in peace. He, he was actually part of the Bardo celebra- uh, celebration. It's run by a guy now named by Tom Kelly. It's a really active foosball scene. They meet four nights a week for tournaments and pickup games. It's a, a really um, excited group. Uh, and uh, Tom, Tom Kelly keeps them all in check are the notes I have here. So you got these pockets, like, almost a revival of sorts, like South Florida Foosball Club. And it's a great, great foosball scene in downtown Chicago. So uh, hopefully, I, I don't know if we're, we're heading in there soon. Are we, uh, we're picking up something now. Um, yeah, there's, I see, I see the feed is there. I think they're waiting to go live, but um, yeah, it, it's exciting. I have, I have played in Chicago um, only once in my lifetime. And uh, that was, I think it was nationals in 2004, maybe. Um, and they had, was, is, and at the time, it, it, and I, my memory is just so bad from that time period, but wasn't, um, Terry Moore involved in that during that time, in the early 2000s, or have I lost my mind? No, no, he was. He there, there was a group of guys out here, including Todd. So Todd, well, Todd was more like Ohio. I don't know where he was. You know, he was a couch diving. I don't know where he was. He might have been with Vinyl. Who knows? But uh, uh-huh. Terry Moore. There was a couple, and Tony was spending. A, Tony Spreeding one was spending a lot of time up here. Gosh, Tony, man, was such a student mm-hmm. during that time. Um, of course, Tiffany Bill, Tiffany Bilarakis was up here. Yeah, uh, I can't. I'm I'm uh, missing names, but there's a group of guys out here. Um, yeah. And Sullivan, have you played in that area before? Is that I know we've talked about some of the other places, but have you been in in that player base before? I think I don't think I have. If I if I did, I was super young. That's for sure. Okay. Because I mean, and that raises a question, and I meant to ask this earlier, Sullivan. So we've been talking about you know, the places you've been and, you know, the mm-hmm. East Coast and, you know, but when I, I guess you've been to a lot of places that you weren't really there competing at, it's only been like, what would you say the last four or five years that you've really been in competition mode? Like, does that sound right? Or, Well, I've actually competed since I was like five or six. Um, I started doing pretty good in women's events or like more doubles women's when I was like 12 uh, I started beating like top teams and so it got more serious to me but yeah Mm -hmm. I mean of course in the last four or five years I've this is when I've been doing like really good yeah okay and it's been more like sorry what no go ahead go ahead I, I was gonna say in these last years, of course, it's been more like heartbreak from losing or yeah. excitement. Like it, everything matters so much more. Yeah. You know, I, I'm curious that when you say heartbreak, like it, it is heartbreaking. Like I've seen you like, yeah, it, it is hard. But what do you take away from that when you do lose? So. It's actually funny because a lot of people say that, that, like, when they were younger, they used to not be able to control, like, their crying, like, in juniors or when they were, Mm -hmm. like, just starting. And I was fine. Like, when I was playing juniors, I never cried. I never did. But it's, it's like, now it it sucks so much more for me. I don't know why. It hurts so much more now. I mean, I'm sure you saw, like, at Nationals. Yeah. My heart was broken. I had to walk away. And it's not even to be rude, but I think people know that by now. Like, it's not to be rude. It's just that I have to walk away. I don't want to cry. You know, I don't want to cry in front of everyone. That's not. It's not fun. But it's. Right. It's like I work so hard for something, and for for me to feel like I didn't do my best, and like that I wasn't executing or doing something as well as I could. It's so frustrating. Yeah. For me. So. Well. And, and but I want to I want you know let's be honest here in in our cu- culture and I don't know maybe lots of cultures like expressing emotion is sometimes considered taboo but um, I, I got to tell you I have been um, dipped uh, one of the worst double dips that's happened to me was at nationals and I got double dipped it was me and Eric Dunn got double dipped in pro doubles and oh. it was like right when I was like just on the cusp I think it was two thousand four and it sucked. I mean, it was like so bad, and I went and I walked around in the, in the parking lot for like an hour. Yeah. And I wish, I wish I'd like teared up or broken down or been pissed. Like mm-hmm. I bottled it up, and I carried yeah. it with me for a long time. Then I, it's only now, and I don't play like 
competitively like that anymore, but it affected my game within the next year or two. And by the time 2006, yeah. so two, 1999 to 2005 was like my, my arc. And then by 2006, I realized it's not for me anymore. It was hard yeah. to do, but anyways, but the point is, is that by 2006, there was so much backlog of emotion that I hadn't dealt with from the losses that I, instead of learning from, I ignored. So yeah. I don't know. I, I think, I think it's, I mean, I don't know. I admire the fact that you can express how you're feeling about something mm -hmm. that, really totally utterly sucks you know what i mean yeah it does and, and especially yeah. like coming home and people here don't understand the like yeah just the awfulness you know, of losing well, so like, i was there so like, i was there i was there when you lost the women's doubles final and i saw you you couldn't yeah. even get your grips off the rods and then you went into the inside nope. booze booth and you cried and cried and <laughs> cried and you'll remember when you, what I said to you, when, when, um, I, you, you, you cried and cried and cried and then you got called up. And I yep. said, you know what? It's time. It's time. You gotta, you gotta go play. But I wanted, yeah. I want you to know what I saw. I saw a very passionate, committed, dedicated young woman leave it all on the table and then let it, uh, let it leave her when, with the, with the misery of losing. I didn't see like, I mean, all it did was validate for me how hard you work and how important uh, uh, doing well is to you or um, validating that hard work with an outcome. So and it's yeah. just going to make you a better player. It's just going to make you yeah. a better player. I mean, um, I'd, I'd much rather see that than, uh, you know, it's worse. Let me tell you what's 10 times worse than that. Uh, someone who gets double dipped or you didn't even get double dipped. Someone who loses in a final and then starts blaming their partner. That's the most common oh, response. Yeah. My goalie, yeah. my goalie, like quite when oh, the goalie's no. not in that's that's the worst. Or, yeah, that or is, that like is the, bad. the angry response, like blaming somebody, like blaming the refs or blaming like all that is is yeah. way more human. So anyway, I just anytime you want to like express yourself, you mm -hmm. work hard enough, you earn every single thing you deliver. And uh I'm okay. I'm ex listen, man, you've you've made foosball exciting to watch the fact that you're doing it with a push shot Thank you so the much. fact that you shoot a push shot you, you push shot when you when you're hot and i'm the, the hottest i've seen you shoot and i've seen you shots out it was when you're when you're playing pro doubles with kevin romero holy <laughs> yeah. smokes man you know what i'm talking yeah. about right i was like I was yeah like, hey, you, we, may, we probably won't ever see a push shot exhibition like this ever unless sully does it again um Thank he was you. in the radio show <laughs> I tell people straight up that I tell the I tell the global community straight up two things. I think you can win an open doubles or open singles major and um, be one of the uh, you'll be the only woman as a forward to win a major. Cindy won a great regional. I don't want to take that away from her in case she's listening. Yeah. But like, there's that, and I think, I mean, I'll lay cash down right now. You're the one to beat at the ITS or the the um, multi table women singles. You're the one to beat. Now, there's probably a hundred women right now that are like, screw you, Torres, but <laughs> I'll put money down right now. Anyway, um, thank you. I was proud. Yeah, I'm that's proud to watch thank you, you so play. much. It's really cool. Thank you. Well, thank you, Mark, Dr. Mark Torres. And I think what we're <laughs> learning here is that emotions are good. We're yeah. uh, inside Foos, uh, Let's Foos World Record event. Uh, inside Foos is bringing you live right now. We've been in South Beach, Florida. Uh, I believe we're looking at opening up other streams across the rest of the western part of the United States. Uh, we're going to be going to Chicago. I hear maybe Trevor's Park Place. Um, joined with uh, by Sullivan Rue, uh, Mark Torres, and I believe the greatest foosecaster of all time, Jim Stevens, has entered the room. Jim, can you hear me, buddy? Oh, yeah. Hmm. Nope. <laughs> Big Stage letdown. Fright. I'm Adam Gilson, by the way. Maybe, maybe, he's, <laughs> maybe he's just timing it because he's that much of maybe a Maybe he's nervous. Maybe he's nervous. Yeah. Maybe yeah. it's Maybelline. <laughs> maybe it's Maybelline. Sully, is, is, Terry, uh, is Terry and Keisha listening? They're, uh, I think they are listening downstairs, actually. Oh, cool. Yeah, I, I oh that's great. So from where I'm sitting, I can see outside. And earlier, I look outside, and my dad has it to his ear, and he's, like, running around with our dog. <laughs> is he? <laughs> that's funny. Is he, uh, are, they, uh, are they going to Worlds? Yeah, of course. Tornado championships. Oh, nice. 
It'll be yeah. good. You know, the last one of the last memories I have of them was at I think at that Nationals event in Chicago. There was nothing to do there. Like it was completely awful. And so they ended up getting a boombox. Your your dad and your mom and I think okay. uh, I don't know who else was there. And your dad was break dancing in the in of at, like, course. 11 o'clock at night and there was nobody else there just me him and your mom and i'm just like this is this is different i like it yeah definitely that's awesome though a whole other, a whole other feeling well i think jim might be um um oh there's jim jim i i don't know if you're there or not i um was just recapping what was going on are you there with us here jim wow no i got left hanging twice that's okay it's but okay. we'll folks, we're it. still, we're, yeah, it's Jim. He can do what he wants. He is, <laughs> he's inside Bruce and I'm just an underling. But uh, again, we're folks, uh, we're just waiting to bring in another uh, stream here soon. I'm not entirely sure where that's going to be, but this is the Let's Foos World Record event. And let's just say what it is. It's the world record shattering event. They're already tripling, quadrupling, quintupling the, the actual record amount of people playing globally simultaneously, simultaneously in a 24 hour period. So we're just going to be adding on more. This is, um, uh, sauce for the goose? I don't know, Sullivan. What what, what kind of term would you use for what the, what's going on right now? I don't know what term I'd use, but I mean, I don't think this this record here will ever be beaten again. To be honest, I think it'd be pretty yeah. uh, pretty challenging. Oh, I'm on the back. Yeah. Okay. All right, folks. So I believe um, again with the Let's Foos World Record event here, we're talking to Mark Torres. Sullivan Rue. I'm Adam Gilson inside Foos, and I believe the greatest Foos caster of all time, Jim Stevens, is finally in the room. Let's let's check in and see. Jimmy there. Wow, 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 wow. My name is Jim Stevens. Been... <laughs> wow. That's <laughs> <He's> completely not... <laughs> different. I don't know. That's okay. That's I've been Jim. left hanging. I've been left hanging four times now. I'm gonna start taking it personally. I can feel it. You should. You should. You should. Okay. I can. I can sense something's happening. Things are happening. Hey, something's Mark. Happening. Yes, sir. Mark, just I hate to uh, talk about food. Um, food. But um, do you have? Uh, have you ever worked with uh, uh, chipotle peppers and adobo sauce? Adobo sauce, man. Oh, I, not chipotle yeah. pepper. It sounds like a. Okay. It sounds like a perfect combination. Very balanced. How is it? Oh, I got so I've got some uh, short ribs that I have marinating in that. They've been slow cooking all day. They're pulled apart. I'm gonna make tacos oh, later. No. They, nice. The smell is just—it's so good. I'm so excited, and I'm, nice. I'm excited to go to Kentucky and eat the food there in Kentucky. So, like, so I got a question for you. Do you eat? You're either what? Do you eat food? <laughs> do, uh, no, I don't eat food ever. <laughs> are you? Are you, an energy. are you a machine? Did your dad build you in the garage? Yes. I have yeah. to charge. I have to charge soon, so stay alarmed today. No, I, you 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 look like one of those gals that could probably eat like a buffet and still not put any like you too <laughs> high. Your metabolism's too high, like your dad. You know, your dad has had your dad had some wicked metabolism. Probably yes, I, turn I, forty. I did know that. Yeah, yeah, I could eat a lot. Depends on the day. I could eat everything in the entire house. Yeah. You, you you seem like one of the you see you probably inherited your dad's you probably eat your dad's my mom's house out of um out of food eat them out of the home but um <laughs> yeah still fine. I guess it I guessed it you know I can <laughs> so, eat everything I see too but it comes with a cost yeah, yeah I just want to I just want to throw that in there <laughs> okay same. good chat sorry <laughs> <laughs> I felt like you guys were bonding about food. But anyways, yeah, you um, add can you, I mean, I, 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 can't, I gotta go back to this real quick. Mark, is there like a taste, a teaser, a snippet, a something about the secret thing you shouldn't be talking about? Or was it's that all you could alive. say? I am, yeah, I'm, I, yeah, my metabolism can't handle myself. <laughs> His metabolism is not. Yeah, isn't it, isn't it intriguing what I'm doing there? Oh, with this tournament? I don't, oh, I don't like cool. you. I don't like cool. you, Mark. Yeah. I'm not a fan. We're not, we're not buddies. It's gonna be, it's gonna be super sick, right? Oh, okay, God. probably. All right. Are you sure? So, are you sure? Yeah. Well, listen, can you test also... one, two, test, test. Can you guys oh, hear me? Hey. There it is. Yeah. Hey, you know what it is? Jim it's Stevens. this. 
it's this silly discord i was actually doing it through the browser and you know i always use the app so i went back to the app and and it worked but boy i was being right. entirely entertained by the three of you that was that was good Thank stuff you. all right let me let me do that hold on i gotta do this because i've been wanting to do this four times in a row uh right. this is adam gilson with inside foos at we're uh, covering the Let's Foos World Record event, a global event of foosball players coming together as a community. Um, here with Sullivan Rue, Mark Torres, and now the greatest fooscaster of all time, Jim Stevens, has finally joined us. How's it going, Jim? Oh, thank you. Thank you. Very good. Very good. What, what an exciting day it is. And by day, I mean a 24-hour day, right, as we circumnavigate the world. We're, we're kind of the Magellan of foosball here over this 24-hour period as we <laughs> as we move with the sun from foosball event to foosball event, and it's very exciting. Wow, that is poetic. My goodness. <laughs> I don't... Yeah. I've been working on my intro for four hours now, and you just nailed it. So, <laughs> anywho, yeah, no, we've been... So, we had a... Uh, just to give you an update of what we've been do doing, we've been mostly focused the last couple hours on the South Florida Foosball uh, Club. Uh, we haven't... I know there's a lot of other things going on, Virginia Beach, New York, but we haven't really been able to get their stream yet. But we got to see a fun grudge match of... Uh, mm -hmm. It's been going on a week now, a week in the making with the right? two... Um, yeah, two amateur players each threw down 50 bucks and um, gave us a good show. And we get to talk to Tommy Brewer down there. And, yes. of course, Mark Torres and Sullivan Rue have been here. So it has been um, – I don't know. This is this is the most fun I've had at a tournament without being at a tournament in uh, probably <laughs> in my weeks. entire life. Yeah, probably in weeks. Yeah. Uh, am am yeah. I supposed to be able to see some action from the South Florida Foosball Club here at Discord? Because I am not. Uh, I'm not well, seeing it either. I think they're having well, a – Well, listen, you guys. What's happening right now is um, uh, we are hearing – Chicago Logan Square Emporium, but we're not seeing it. So they might gotcha. need to refresh yeah. the browser. But I think we might end up going back to South Florida Foosball Club here shortly. So yeah, their um, monster DYP is just starting as well. So we might be able to get a, a, a eye into that as well. Yeah, but well, what an exciting time as foosball players all around the world are all getting together on the same day and we're setting a record. You know, guys, records are made to be broken, right? So next year, let's see what we can do and make it even bigger. So what are the uh, what are the numbers so far? I know we've been keeping track of uh, of the numbers. Yeah, the the numbers have been um, well. From what I understood, the, the 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 record was crushed within like the first hour or two. Yeah. yeah. Right now, right now the world rec we're way past the world record by players. We're at the I'm looking at the um, the website, and I don't even understand if this makes any sense by players. We're nearing the septuple world record. Mm -hmm. What? And okay. yeah, and I think that means nine times the original amount. Except, I, except I think would be seven. Would that be? I yeah, that'd that be, would seven. be seven. Whatever. I'm not a math guy. Yeah. Nor seven. Which major. Right. Yeah. Okay. Whatever. Show off. So the, I'd see. So <laughs> we have the locations. We have the players, and we're we're now approaching yeah. uh, 17 hours and four minutes until uh, until we wrap things up. But tomorrow. Yep. Um, although that would be today in Europe, and it would be, uh, gosh, I'm not even going to try to figure out Asia. No, no, and that's not, I, I don't even actually see anything on the on the, on the the map yet, what, what's going to be, ouch, sorry, a cat just jumped on my head. Um, we have the, the world record by location, I'm not even joking, it's on my shoulder. Um, the world record by location, we're getting close to tripling the world record right now. Um so yeah, I, it's 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 pretty amazing to see this happening uh, live. Well, and and you know what's cool, guys? I mean, obviously we've got this amazing twenty-four hour period of foosball, but we're also heading into next week one of the the most insane weeks of foosball I think we've ever seen, with two of the biggest tournaments in the world taking place simultaneously, both here in the United States and uh, across the pond in Germany. And it's going to be an amazing, an amazing week of foosball on both sides of the Atlantic. And of course, Inside Foos will be there to, to keep you posted on everything that takes place next week. And so we have that to look forward to. And you can, of course, check that out at InsideFoos.com. When will that be going live, Jim? We will be, uh, we'll be going live from, um, from the Tornado Championships in Lexington, Kentucky on Wednesday. We'll have a stream up on Wednesday. And then we'll really sink our teeth into it on Thursday when things get rolling. Nice. I think we're looking at getting maybe Florida back. Yeah, we're gonna have Florida so back some... here in a second. We'll have Florida back in a second. Oh, I'm starting right. to sweat already. I know. It's <laughs> I could, I, that's what I was saying. I I heard that it was held in a sauna, that Beach Town B Town, and it only gets. Well, uh... but not inside. The AC was good inside. I, but there's yeah. AC no, inside. Just let me outside. complain, man. 
I can complain. No, I wasn't even yeah, there. I want to well, complain. Actually, two, two years ago, the last beach down beat down, the, the, the AC went down, which I can't imagine because it was so hot Ouch. and steamy when we were there. Um, wow. But yeah, that, that happens every once in a while. And they just uh, they just play through it, I suppose, uh, with towels and uh, continuously wiping the sweat off the table, of course. Yeah. So, Jim, I'm curious. You've been in the foosball yeah, game uh, for a very long time. What is seeing something like this happen? Like, what does this mean to you? Not just maybe personally, but, you know, but just for foosball. Yeah. No, I've been you know, I've been thinking about it, and it's something that has been building for quite a long time with with social media taking such a, a prominent role in in our community. But that's what it's about. It's about community. It's not any longer. It's not your local DUIP, although it still is. Right. Everything kind of starts at, at the grassroots level, but it it's the entire world all kind of coming together and cooperating. Um, and, and really, once again, exemplifying the fact that we are one family, we are one community, no matter where we live, you know, uh, everywhere from California to New York to Germany to Great Britain to Iran to South Africa to mainland China, Taiwan, Japan, on around the world. We are all, um, you know, all members of the same family here, the foosball family. And, and this I think this particular event really demonstrates that maybe better than anything we've ever seen. Yeah, one hundred percent. Jim, you're so Jim, you're so damn good. Like you just named you like are five good. countries. I've, I never even heard of those countries. Like, <laughs> no. And, and I don't want to. I don't want to forget Mark Torres' home country of Mexico either. And of course, I'm sure they're. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And again, no, no, you know, and actually, whoa, you know, I, actually I should have brought in. I'm feeling appropriate. <laughs> and, and, and you should be. No, and, and you all should seriousness, be. <laughs> all seriousness aside. Um, you know, Mark, and actually, Mark's dad, Mark's dad is Guamanian, if I'm not, uh, if I'm not mistaken, from Guam, oh, wow. right? Uh, so right. he's he's Pacific Islander, of course, and uh, of the Philippines as well. And, uh, you know, there's player bases. I don't know if there's a player base in Guam. I wouldn't doubt it. Um, but, hey, we got a, We got an image up there. I just, uh, are we looking at, uh, is that uh, South Florida? South Florida. Yeah. Yes, that is. Yeah. And where, where are we coming less... from here? What's our, what's our venue there? This is this it's, is where the beach town beach town was held. There it is. Yeah. I recognize it. But now. It's, oh man. Yeah, but it's less blurry than when you might have been there last. I think. Yeah, perhaps so. <laughs> yeah. Throwing that out there. When, we, when you were looking up at the ceiling from your back. Jim. <laughs> hey, it was comfortable I, down can... there, buddy. It was comfortable, and well, I couldn't move. I was spinning. Come on. That tile looks cold. So that was a plus. Oh, Trevor. Was... Trevor Park says hey to ever, to all of y'all. Ooh, what's where up, Trevor? Trevor? He he texted me that. Oh. You getting ready. Is he is he on? Is he is he got his barbecue going? I want to see a live stream of Trevor's uh, barbecue area. He's got a great yes. barbecue area. So so cool going coast to coast tonight. Hopefully we get a few more streams up that we can we poke our head in on. Uh, obviously yeah. not a lot of play by play unless they want to stick a camera on the table. We could certainly attempt it, but we can also look at the people in these pictures, identify them as our our friends, and uh, and and maybe poke a little fun at them at some point. But uh, you know what's but distracting also, as hell. You know what's distracting that? as hell? Adams profile picture what the hell happened to you we what happened to you in that picture dude like you your mean, hair bro it is what are you talking about do you, you not stick follow your my facebook a, did you stick your finger no. in a light socket it's reminiscent of back attacks. to the future for sure no 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 this is my this is my um uh mary shelley's frankenstein i'm, I'm doing I that uh, what's that yeah. yeah what's that guy's thing the um you know not boris karloff's but the original no, the, no. the mary shelley the mary shelley version uh, yeah, yeah the um hold on hold on um it's um uh gary oldman <laughs> yeah yeah gary. one of one of the great actors dracula. isn't gary oldman oh great? my gosh oh he sinks into every i can't even that's i couldn't even think bram stoker's dracula his version yeah. of that with the hair that was where i was going with there but anyways i dig actually it's not so bad to digress this day no, I mean, what else have we got to do but digress? You right? know, that's pretty much pretty much yeah. what we got to work with here, um, and yeah. and keep people update on on the uh, on the stats. Of course, everything in Europe is shut down; they're asleep, I would presume, um, as we move into the wee hours of a of a Friday morning. Yeah, um, and I'm looking. I mean, so we have, so by players, we are in the 1300 range, and that's up till now. It's going to only grow. Live at one time there was 172, but again, you know, as these numbers. I'm curious. I feel like these numbers are going to be bigger than than what's rated right now because a lot of these places are grayed out, and I think that just might be like a technical thing. I think it's going yeah. to be larger, and and by locations, just hundreds. I, I, again, small predictions. I don't know, but I feel like by the time this is done, we're going to be doubling the numbers we're looking at here. Now again, you, you I'm not big so. on math. Yeah. And so, so, and again, so for the, 
Go ahead. Go ahead, Adam. Yep. No. no, I was going to no. say for the people who are out there watching now who haven't yet actually participated, how, how do they go about that? They, of course, would have to get the um, the Com Kicker and the Let's Foods app, I guess, and, and report in, basically, right? Yes. Yes, they would. Um, and it's there. If you, you Google, I believe it's a Google Play allows you to get that. I haven't uh, downloaded it on mine because I'm just looking at the, foos, uh, the, the website, live.com. 2ms-kickern.de but you know this is and if you look at it if you look at it it says world record attempt but a de- attempt now has been uh crossed off it's just world record they know and you All know right. and, yeah. and that, uh, go ahead no, yeah, I was going to say, yeah, we're going to we're going to report in here that Durango Dragons are actually getting together down at our local uh, our local pub tonight, uh, the Garage, which has two uh, two tornado two T three thousands. They're getting together tonight, so we're going to make sure that they they sign in and uh, and, and we have um, a report in from Durango as well. And, and we may if we get streamed? out of here early enough. I don't think so. I don't think they're going to be streamed. Um, but um, if we get out of here early enough, maybe we'll head down there. Um, and, uh, and, and maybe report in from there, maybe over our Facebook live, or if we can get a stream, cool. up, we'll see, but that may be a little, maybe a little late for it or for me to get down. There. Well, we'll, this, well, this just in, this just in 8 45 AM Eastern time tomorrow, Blake Robertson and I will be doing the coverage of Asia for the wow. live stream. So, yeah, man. So get up, get your cup of coffee. Uh, Eight, uh, know, I'm sorry. 8 45, 8 45, which is Eastern. Just oh, 645. Yeah. No, that's 545 for you. Okay. Yeah. No. Five, so get what? up. No, yeah. I'll just stay awake all night. <laughs> but, I, I will be awake, but I will be uh, I will be taking kids to kids to school yeah, about that time. I'll be in class. That, so. Yeah, school is back, <laughs> guys. School is back. Hold on. Let's talk about priorities, okay, Sully? You want okay. school or um like three people watching us stream Asia? What do you want mm. to pick? Make a choice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm definitely gonna, I'm definitely gonna skip and watch, watch the live stream. <laughs> uh, oh yeah. Where's your dad? Tell your dad, hey, I made a decision. I made a life choice right now. <laughs> <laughs> Priorities are huge. I'll be awake. Uh, so if y'all are still on after, uh, no, yeah, you, I'm, I'm so my, I'm just sarcastic. You better be in no, your I, class, I actually, like focus. I actually, um, only have one class tomorrow because my other one got canceled. So. Oh, cool. Mm. Yep. And and, and oh. folks, if you if you haven't got tired of us yet, you can also listen in Sunday night on Foos Talk Live because um, we're going to be focusing on the Tornado World Championships. I believe Liz uh, Hillmore is going to join us, a multi-world champion. And there is an interview that Clay Toomey did with Sullivan Rue that we're going to play on Sunday oh, yeah. night as well. Oh, yeah. uh, So we're looking looking forward to that. And from what I'm hearing, Clay Toomey will be at the Tornado Championships, microphone in hand, uh, getting a few more interviews for us for for Foods Talk Live, and that's exciting. So Sunday night, uh, a, a pre-show of uh, what could be one of the most exciting weeks uh, in the history of table soccer next week with both the um, Tornado Championships and the Leonhardt World Series taking place uh, both in, uh, in Lexington, Kentucky, and in Germany as well. So uh, a great week to look forward to, guys. Yeah, guys, that's going to be amazing. My, I'm going to go put ahead. my kids to bed. I may, I may stop by a little bit later, but i got to drop off and put my kids to bed. It's been incredible hanging out. Sully. Thank you. You're a shining light in foosball, and I really appreciate watching Thank you, you so play. Much. I'll be talking to you soon. Thank you. Yeah, See you, buddy. Thank you so much. Bye, Mark. Good night. Do you think Do you think Mark reads uh, you know, stories to his kids at night? Do you think he does, or do you think he just makes stuff up and, makes and goes up. off on tangents? Makes stuff up. And, makes them up. And, and, and yeah. delivers them a little belligerently, you know, just no. the usual, He's right, to the kids. Yeah. No, yeah. I think, you know how some people have, like, uh, karaoke stages? I think he has a story bedtime stage and he just re- reads the story from up there and acts it out i bet you guys props i could see yeah that. yeah props 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 would work in a dark room with the kids you know i actually do i, I read um, i'm reading Ari the harry potter series uh and i do i, I do all the different voices I, I i try to do all of them of course they change from night to night give me your haggard I can't, I can't remember your, what i want to hear I'm, I'm well, you know it's better when haggard. i can read it but of course haggard is an irish <laughs> and, you know, he's a scotsman like this right <laughs> So, um, and then uh, Dumbledore, my new ring Dumbledore. Dumbledore. Um, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. it changes every week, buddy. It changes every week, yeah. but, but okay, it's a lot of Hermione. Fun. Just one more. No, Hermione, Hermione speaks very quickly and she speaks very quickly and of course with a very oh, tight wow. accent like this. Yes. That was... You should do audio books. Yeah. Yes. I, I thought about it. 
I'm going to make that phone call right now. In fact, let's see if I can get a gig as an audiobook <laughs> reader. And I always mar I always marvel. They don't make any mistakes. You ever notice that the audiobook? Yes, and we, they don't. We apologize for digressing here, but, um, but uh, but no, they never make mistakes. And I think about it, and I go, boy, they're they're reading this, and if they do make a mistake, they have to do it over. Um, and, and I wonder how long it takes them to do this. I know. You know? I can imagine. But anyway, again, we digress. We're, we're checking in there. This is uh, the South Florida Foosball Club. In fact, there's Tommy sitting right down there below us uh, with a free hat, which uh, he seems to have at uh, every tournament. Uh, limit is only yeah. one, unfortunately. Nobody ever did. No, no, they don't. And if they did, I'm, I'm not sure they'd want to because, well, anyway. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, I heard you guys when I first came on talking about Sully and, and, and what you've been accomplishing out on tour. And, and I know we talked about your, your loss at the Nationals. And what, the one thing I've seen from you this year, Sully, is, is, is passion. I mean, you are there. You are, you're into it. You're, you're a little bit emotional, although controlled. But it's the passion you have now for foosball. And I think that's something that is going to take you over the top. And I know Mark is predicting that you're going to win the multi-table world championship next year. And I think you certainly have a good shot at it. There's a, a bunch of contenders and some things have to go right for you. Obviously, you can prepare and practice and get out there and play your best. And and maybe that's good enough and maybe it isn't. We'll see. Uh, certainly with the quality of your game, though, it very well could be. Um, because you took, you took third, you took third in 2019 in Mercia yeah. and talk a little bit about your experience playing in that singles event, uh, playing multi-table. And really at that point, it was a little bit unexpected that you would reach the, the top yeah, three, but... you know, and talk <laughs> yeah, a little bit about, uh, well, about what that was like. So at first there's a round Robin, uh, race to seven to basically see if you make it past the first round or whatever, because there's so many players, I guess they have to do an elimination round. So I actually won all like eight of those. Wow. Uh, and you have to mark the score. So it wasn't just like winning. It's like, how many points did you get basically? Um, so yeah, I did win all of those. And, and a lot of other people from US made it through the round. Mm -hmm. But so I played on random tables, whatever. Um, then I remember playing all of my matches, I, I didn't play any people from the U.S. like in my actual rounds. I did play like Midori, Miriam, maybe Jackie in the round robin, which of course sucks. But yeah. Oh, it's the tournament. Okay, sorry. Um, as I was saying. So yeah, I played and then I was getting into some intense matches and I'm like, well, I got to be kind of far up there, I guess. I, I, I had no idea how to check the brackets or my standing with anything. So then I play um, Sandy. Uh, what's her last name? I can't remember her last name, but played her and it went like eight, seven. And once you get into the final game, you have to do one ball on each table, which is scary because you can just miss one shot and then they're they're up one ball and they're up on their table so you're feeling super discouraged and that seemed to happen to me every match do you know what i mean uh with like the point the point thing yeah yeah how like it, it will go up so it, it would be three two but they get the ball on their table so it's not even tornado right. so i'm stressing of course but i pulled i pulled them through each one um and that the, they got pretty, pretty intense. Each match that I played, very intense. Um, and then at one point, I think it was like Deliza and Midori came up to me and they're like, you're the only girl left from US. Like, you're the only one left. I was like, hmm. wow. You know, like, that's pretty cool. And then I play a match on Bonzini and I'm like, oh, no, <laughs> I'm scared for this. And I did pull that one out too, eight seven. And wow. then someone came up to me and was like, "You're playing in the semifinals." I was like, "What? Mm. No way!" <laughs> so then I play um, the lady that won actually from Austria. Um, and it did go. I think it went seven seven, and she she beat me, and that was so awful. Like that, of course, felt so bad, but. Once I got to go on the podium, like once they call everyone out, that yeah. was awesome. That was so cool. But that also just motivated me even more, like to be yeah. on top because that, that, that was Mar Marina Tabakovic uh, out of Austria. Yes. So, did you say you lost? What was the score in the semifinal? I, 
I think it was seven seven. I think it was game point. Actually. Oh boy! Wow. And that, and she of course was playing yeah. on Garlando, which is a, a you know it yeah. has to be one of the more difficult tables for you. Although yeah, I believe you, yeah, it's 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 a difficult table even for Garlando players. Um, yeah. It's, it, it's not an easy table, but so you were that close. In and I, you know, in my opinion, and you, you were an outstanding player then, of course. But it, to me, I feel like you've improved by by forty percent or more already. Uh, how much of that comes from you, you know, go, playing your dad? playing singles matches against your dad because your your transition game is phenomenal in singles it's amazing how much of that comes from playing against your dad who i know is not pulling any punches he's going hard against <laughs> you right um yes. you know and, and i'm guessing you you do win your fair share against him but <laughs> I do. Um, but but how much of your, do you think your your singles game and your transition game in particular have improved uh because of, of how, how you get to play against a great transition game and a great singles yeah. player in your dad it's it's helped more than I even realized, and I think I've started to realize it more now because I'll catch things and I'll just blindly do certain things, shoot the ball, like if the if if they're not ready yet, uh, like if I get in on my three and they're not there, I just shoot it, like naturally, or I catch a ball naturally. That's definitely because of him. Um, just picking a hole right away, that's because of him. Um, adjusting to anything crazy. Anything because he would shoot everything on me, everything on goal. So it's like you always have to be prepared. But yeah. that could also be a disadvantage for me sometimes because, like, playing an expert in pro or even certain like uh, women's events, because I over race because he his. I mean, everyone knows his push kick is ridiculous. Yes, it is. So sometimes I'm I'm uh, just not even thinking, and I jump all the way to the. To the wall, and then I'm like, "Wow, uh, I'm not playing my dad." That's a just of that. That's funny. That's funny. Jim Stevens uh, talking with Sullivan Rue as we're bringing you live coverage of the Com Kicker and Let's Foo's uh, world record. It's no longer a world record attempt. We have set the world record. It's just where is that going to yeah. land at eventually? As we're <laughs> setting world record for number of participants around the world and also for number of venues. Uh, and right now we're looking in uh, to Lake Worth, Florida, the South Foosball of South Florida Foosball Club hosting this uh, Thursday night event. And uh, of course, there's Thursday night events starting up on the West Coast of America as well. And hopefully we're going to uh, have some uh, coverage of that as well. So um, so, so what's next? You're, you're preparing for, for the Tornado Championships next week. And of course, this is a big one. Uh, are you putting in, in some table time every single day? Yes, I am, of course. Uh, especially me and my dad playing against each other. We've, we've actually improved together a lot. It, it's, it's obvious. Yeah. From playing against each other. I mean, we always do, but I, for some reason, I, I guess we're talking about things. And we always talk about things, but we're really thinking, we're thinking what can improve each of our games. And we're using like each other's weakness against each other so that we're stronger on those parts too. Right. And and you're going to be playing with your your great friend Midori Kimura, of course, who is also one of the the favorites in 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 women's singles. And of course, uh, you guys reached the finals at the nationals, and you won Texas State. Yeah, we did. You mm -hmm. you played each other in uh, in singles, I believe, in both of those as well in the <laughs> yeah. finals. And um, so so talk a little bit about um, and, and who's your who's your dad playing with uh, next week? Or remind me. Playing with Paul. Playing with with Paul Smith, right? That's right. Yes. And uh, yeah, that and that's great for that's great for Paul Smith. Um, yeah, because awesome. your, your, your part, your dad is such a great partner. He's going to be so good for Paul who has just so much talent, doesn't he? Just a, a super, super talented player. Yeah. Yeah. They could do it. They could do it for yeah. sure. So talk about your relationship with Midori, obviously your competitors. And when you do play each other, you give it, give it your all. You, you give the respect to your opponent of giving, giving them their, your best game. But then talk yeah. about also how the chemistry that you guys have on and off the table really benefits you guys as a doubles team as well. Yeah, it does. Um, I mean, we've always been super close. I've known her since I was younger, uh, since I was a kid. And we used to play, we used to play together, whatever. Um, but, yeah, playing with her is super fun. Um, we, can, we can tell each other what needs to be done, what needs to be fixed, without any, like, hurt feelings or anything. We have the option to switch anything like if there's something wrong we can work it out there's nothing that we can't work out um and it's it is an advantage being so close because it's just more fun it, it is definitely more fun playing with someone that you're that close to i mean i consider her my best friend on tour mm -hmm. I, i'm sure you can tell by us running around the tournament yeah. room 
but yeah, it, and it's awesome to to go and hang out with her each tournament. I look forward to it. Not even just playing with her, but go and hang out. Yeah, for sure. And, and the fact that you guys have such great communication, I think it's really the key, isn't it? And, and that's really something you can, you can tell any doubles teams. Communication is vital. You, you have to be able yeah. to communicate. You have to be open. You have to be a good listener. You know, you have to be uh, you have to be egoless to some degree. You know, if your yes, partner definitely. says we need to switch, we need to switch, we need to give him a different look. You don't you don't hold on to that and say, no, I'm the yeah. forward. You're the goalie. You don't do that. But it's yeah. about communication, isn't it? It's about being able to communicate. Definitely is. Uh, and we both have equal say over anything. And, and like you said, no ego, whatever. We don't get offended because we're both just trying to help each other out. I mean, of course, help each other out, but just win in the end yes so of yeah course. It, it definitely is important <laughs> for sure and and of course the tornado championships at least as far as uh, american style foosball goes uh tornado foosball goes this is where you get the deepest fields this is where you have you know five or six teams that could win a championship both in women's doubles open doubles and whatever singles it maybe yeah. even runs deeper than that although uh, i'm not sure it runs a whole lot deeper these days than tony and then maybe tommy uh, as far as winning <laughs> yeah. singles championships, and, and unless Ryan comes out and he's ready, of course, yeah, um, yeah, you know. But talk a little bit. Let's let, let's look at it now. You're we're gonna you're you're gonna put on your reporter's hat now. Um, mm -hmm. As we look, if we look at let's look at the men's singles competition. Obviously, Tony's the favorite. Tommy Yor, yeah. um, although Tommy yeah. has stepped away a little bit, he will be stepping back in for next week. Um, he has to yeah. be the second favorite. But after that, you, there's a few other guys. Obviously, Rob Mares yeah. is always um, in the mix if if Ryan Moore plays. But also guys like like Brandon Munoz. What what about Brandon? What have you what have you seen from him that maybe makes you think he's got a shot? So he is more of a wild card because I mean, as you can tell from his game, it's kind of it's all over the place. Not in a bad way, but um it is hard to adjust to that. So he takes a lot of people by surprise, which would work in his favor. I don't know that he would take it. I don't, I don't know that he'd take the world title this year at least, but mm -hmm. I think definitely he, he, he will get one. But, yeah, I think he'd be a top a top contender for sure. Yeah, he's one of those guys. Because of the uniqueness of his singles game, yeah, I think you said it to where um, he is difficult to match up against because he can do yeah. so many things. He can do so many things on the fly. You know, you look at that Texas State Championship event that Tommy eventually mm -hmm. came back and double-dipped Tony. Well, he played yeah. Brandon. Played Brandon uh, in, in the match before that, or one or two matches before that, and it went right down to the wire in the fifth game. And Brandon played wow. Tommy pretty much straight up even. Um, it just comes down to whether he can be consistent. He seems exactly. to be getting better each event. Each event we see him, he seems to be getting mm -hmm. better, um, which is kind of scary because he's already amazing and dynamic <laughs> yeah. on the table. Um, but, it, you know, that's what's fun about this event next week. And I've talked about it before. Obviously, the most prestigious event in the world is the World Cup and the World Championships, the multi-table event. But when yeah. it comes to the highest quality of play, um, you know, it, it very well could be the Tornado Championship, Tornado World Championships, be, because yes. of the for a variety of reasons. But it's the one where you see maybe the best matches, the highest level of play. And, of course, mm -hmm. you're going to get a debate from from others, Leonhardt and and others. But I, I think you have so many really good Tornado players competing against each other that you get just an amazing level of play, don't you? You get an amazing, yeah. fierce competition. People want it so much. I agree, yeah. I'm actually really excited to see. I mean, of course, I'm always excited, but this year – I'm excited to see who wins because I feel like in the men's doubles, there's no team that I think is like way above any other. Like I don't, I'm not looking at a team and saying, Oh yeah, they're going to take it. You know, I'm, I'm really curious to see who will win. It's going to be super intense. Yeah. Let's switch over to doubles. Let's do that. And you know, there are so many teams. There is not one team. Is there, I mean, you could look at Tommy Yor and Brandon Moreland, the defending champions, but in, mm -hmm. and certainly they have a great shot at it going back to back or 2019 and 2021 as it, as it works. Um, but then of course, Tony and, and I'm guessing Tony may be playing with Dave and Mary, uh, but I'm not hundred yeah, percent so. sure. Uh, and then you have a Gummison and McMillan who are always in the mix. You've got yep. Blake Robertson and Ryan Moore, you know, who are um, the defending uh, multi-table world champions. And yes. you have four or five other teams, really strong teams, including, your dad and Paul Smith, who are in the mix as well. And like you say, there really isn't one standout. Obviously, you can look at Tony Spradham and, and the guy who's won the last five tornado championships in singles and say he's he's the favorite, despite the loss 
to Tommy at Texas. But when it comes to yeah. a doubles, when it comes to the doubles event, there may be there may be ten teams who yeah. are, are in no, competition for winning, right? Um, yeah, of course. In singles, I, I'd say, <laughs> I mean, everyone would say Tony or Tommy, maybe Ryan. But yeah, in doubles, I, I don't see, I don't see a certain team being way ahead of another. I'm excited to see that. Yeah, and I think there's going to be a, a lot of super good teams and maybe even surprise teams. I mean. We've had that at Worlds before where it's like an expert and a pro beat like a master team. Yeah, That's exciting too. That's cool to see. Yeah, and it's almost inevitable that something like that is going to happen or, or a pro yeah. team or you know, maybe may making it into the top five. You know, that sort yeah, of thing exactly. has happened to, I know Mario Yanuzzi, Brian Jones would be an example of yeah, that a few that, years ago. Maybe. Yeah. And so, you know, those sorts of things happen as well. Teams get on a roll. They win some close matches, which you have to do, right? Uh, yeah. In order to, to to advance, you've got to win those four four games, those those two two uh, game, five four in the fifth or six four in the fifth sort of uh, matches. You have to win those, and yeah. sometimes those teams do that and are able to 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 pull off upsets. And yeah. I'm excited. You know, I've got a little bit of information about Dave Gummison and Tracy McMillan. Of course, they've won uh, three world championships together, two of them on Tornado, and they have been they have been working hard. Don't 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 tell anybody that I know this, but I know yeah. Dave Gummison has been training which means Tracy McMillan has as well. So I, I can expect a, a really good performance from them. They're so consistent, you know, uh, even, even at the later stages, so to speak of their careers, they are still, they can, you know, top contenders who can beat anybody at any time. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm excited to see that too. I, I'm, I mean, I know that they're capable of winning anything anywhere. They could win worlds. Yes, they Especially could. Wouldn't that, wouldn't that be a story? Wouldn't that, that be would a cool be awesome. story? Yes, yeah. that would be awesome. Wait a minute. Uh, Jim Stevenson, Sullivan Rue, joining you once again, if you've just joined us, uh, as we bring you live coverage of uh, a calm kicker and Let's Foods world record attempt, which um, I think we're up for, I think we're up to seven times the world record so far. And, and you know, I, coming in late on in kind of the evening session here, do you, do you know, where, where was the original record set? Was there, was there a record actually compiled? Because it looked like it was only 150 players, which I think on yeah. any given thursday night probably across <laughs> america you've got at least that many players playing yeah definitely i don't know i don't know the original but i know that it's we've just beat it so badly the the last record but yeah, I'm yeah not sure. they've, they've done such a such a great job of promoting this event and still beyond the, 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 the one of the major sponsors there in, in germany who also sponsored the 2017 uh itsf world cup which in my opinion maybe it's the greatest world cup ever held it was an amazing event there yeah. in hamburg germany um, yes so we're we're um, we're waiting for some more streams to come on board. We're looking in here at the South Florida Foosball Club in hot and steamy Florida. <laughs> it's got to be hot. It's August in Florida. It's got to yeah, be ninety five degrees and ninety five percent humidity, doesn't it? <laughs> Absolutely. Although where you live there in, in in Crowley, Louisiana, it's probably not a whole lot different, is it? It's it probably is not. Hot. Probably more yeah. humid. <laughs> Yeah, we're we're up in the mountains here, and we are in the in the eighties, but it's it's dry. And in the evenings, of course, we we cool off to to the fifty degree level, which is really nice. We just open up all the windows, and all that nice cool mountain air comes in. Uh, so uh, we don't get that kind of humidity. But uh, um, as we're bringing you action here from uh, from the South Florida Foosball Club, and of course, looks like they've got a really nice turnout there tonight. And I know there's good turnouts all around the world. Uh, this event started today at about 1 p.m. Eastern time here in the U.S. as it, it kicked off over in Germany and then it's made its way so far uh, west around the world to the East Coast and then eventually here hopefully to the West Coast where I know they're trying to set up a stream in New York City where they're working on a stream uh, as well as we can hopefully can bring you some some more uh, live coverage. I feel I feel like, you know, like on election night, right? It's like election night where you just have to yes. keep... You just have to keep yes. talking, right? You just have to keep keep saying stuff, yeah, I agree. And, and and then come back <laughs> around and say it again, um, you know, as yep. we check in on the uh, on on the numbers, um, which mm -hmm. we don't have in front of us. But last we saw was something like fourteen hundred players had checked in uh, through the Let's Foos app. And if you don't have that Let's Foos app, head to Google Play or the App Store. There's some live action calling yep. of a match. Yeah. And hopefully we're also going to have uh, Adam Gilson back with us. Adam had to, to feed his son. Adam is a, uh -huh. is a chef and a father. Uh, I can relate. 
And um, so um, he, he might be back. Mark Torres may join us. He had to put his kids to bed. There's a theme here, isn't there? And and, yes. and, and I, I know you don't have a whole lot more time either. You, you've got school tomorrow. And of course, you got to yeah. get rested for, uh, for that do. marathon <laughs> we call the Tornado Championships. I'll be arriving Tuesday and staying for a full week. And I know you know, it's all about pacing yourself early on, isn't it? Making sure that you that you sleep well, that you eat well, that you, get, you drink plenty of fluids as you prepare which, for what you know is going to be a marathon event. It always is remarkable to me. And of course, I, I sit up there and I commentate somehow for six days, And but it's the players. It's remarkable how you can play so yeah. many events and go far in these events. I mean, every event you're playing in, you're playing a bunch of matches, right? And yet still yes. have something left on that Sunday or Monday uh, at the tornado championship, still, still have something left to be able to play. What do you do? How do you, how do you, and of course you're, you're, you're youthful, you're young. Um, and that helps, but what do you do to take, do you take care of yourself early on? You kind of pace yourself heading into these long weekends. Um, honestly, no. Uh, I mean, of course I'm not going to do anything, whatever. I don't practice too, too much, but like of the week of, or maybe even a week and a half before I'm not like pounding it, you know, I'm not, not doing that. Uh, then at the tournament, I try to rem remember to eat because honestly, I never know what time it is because I never go outside. And usually there's no windows or anything in these tournament rooms. <laughs> so I never know the time at all. Uh, but I, I do remember to eat. I drink uh, protein, protein drinks, you know. Uh, I try not to play, like, extra events, which usually ends up happening. And, and I mean extra events, like, maybe an open doubles. Like, I'll pick open, double, open doubles or open singles. Because, yeah, I'm playing, like, ten events at Worlds. Um, that's, but yeah, I, that's, I don't... That's sorry. crazy. No, that's crazy. I mean, that, that is, that is so much. And of course there's some people play 17, 18, 19. I think Miriam Ali one year played about 23. Um, yep. And which is just, which is just extraordinary that, uh, that, 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 you know, and that's, that's what our sport's about, at least in this format, it's about surviving to some degree. And it's about having yeah, that kind of stamina yeah. uh, to get through those long weeks. Yes, it is very important. Um, I, in Florida, I played open singles and open doubles, and I did pretty well in both. And then I realized that it did affect me, uh, my game, my arm. So, yeah, I'm going to limit it to just one of those, <laughs> which yeah. is open doubles. I'm playing at Worlds. So, yes. You are, you are playing open doubles. Who are you playing open doubles with? I'm playing with Corey Taylor. You're playing with Corey Taylor. Okay. He's going to play goalie for you? Uh, I'm not sure, actually. Uh, maybe. But I played with Midori last Worlds in open doubles, and we actually got in the money. Nice, yeah. Yeah, we did really well. Uh, me and her like to play men's events too, pro doubles. We're sure. going to try for pro doubles soon. We're not we're not teamed up for Worlds, but yeah, we're gonna we're gonna try. Yeah. Not, yeah, and I heard Mark mention it earlier that uh, you know obviously you've already had some success. You, you won the expert singles down at uh, at the Bardo and, and and nationals as well, I think, didn't you? But um, you know these are or. You you were in, in in the mix at least at national. Yeah, I was in the final. I you almost. The final. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But um, but these are these are you know it, to, to me your your game is good enough to do that. Absolutely, it's good enough to do that. Mark talked about you potentially winning an open singles or a, an open doubles major playing, um, playing the forward position. And who knows that that certainly is something that I think you're you're eventually capable of, and and maybe yeah. sooner rather than later. But <laughs> you you still you still enjoy that, don't you? I mean, you're still playing these open events. They are open after all, right? They're not they're yeah. not really men's event. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I, lo I love playing it. Uh, I love seeing how, how well I can do. And I do believe that I could win an open. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, I think I could. And a good, a good amount of pros, a good amount of pros, a master. I think I've beaten a master. Well, he was a master in doubles, but not singles. Yeah, I, I want to beat my first master in singles. So you, you you won't be playing the pro events at Tornado Championships then? Yes, I will. I will be playing. You, you will. Oh, yes. Um, uh, and, and you're playing with who in in pro doubles? Uh, Mikey Bilarakis. You're playing with Mike. Okay, yeah, another yes. really really good goalie. As, as yes. it should be, I I firmly believe you should be playing uh, forward in not only pro but open as well. 
Um, but um, but uh, no, that's that's good. And I expect you're going to be in the mix. You know, those pro events at the Tornado Championships are very difficult. They're very deep they fields are. of a lot yes. of really good players. But I'm, I'm looking forward to, to watching you compete uh, at Thank that you. event, uh, at those events as well. So that's going to be fun. Yes, definitely. All right. Well, you, you know, you maybe you need to jump off. Um, hopefully we'll have someone else jump in because I'm yeah. not sure how much I can sit here and solo and talk um, <laughs> without without actually watching a match. Right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, if, if I have matches. Yeah, no problem. But uh, yeah, but uh, we, we certainly if you do need to go, we, we do appreciate you joining yeah. us. And uh, you, not only you're a yeah. great player, but you're a great communicator as well. And and after after your foosball career, you can move into the broadcast booth for sure. Yes, please. That would be great. <laughs> yeah. Thank you all so much. I, <laughs> Sorry. All right, Sully. Thanks. Say hey to the family for us, and we'll see you next week. For sure. See ya. Hi, Ashley. Hey, Ashley, doing a little on air. Uh, nice to hear your voice. How are you? I like it. Yeah. Now maybe you could uh, kind of fill everybody in on some of the numbers and on some of, you know, what's going on, flesh it out a little bit for us. Yeah, and a lot of times that means league night in in Europe for sure. Yeah, at least in the past it hasn't so much Friday nights. I, I recall one year I was in um, in in the west side of Germany, right up against the the French border, um, and I was taken up to a, the top of this hill in this in this small town in Saarland, which is a, one of the states in Germany. And um, in up in the top of this hill, it was it was league night. It was a Friday night, and I walk in there and they have eight eight tables. All of them are different. All of them probably built in the nineteen fifties, um, almost handmade. And then a lot of the players, some of them were in their 80s, some of them were you know, in the 60s, some of them were in their teens, um, but it was incredibly competitive. And it was one of the great nights of my foosball career um, because I, I got a taste of kind of the history of it, the history in Europe in, in particular. And some of these players who never played tournaments do not go out on the ITSF tour or play in, in championship tournaments. But at the end of their work week, every Friday night, they're up on top of the hill there playing, uh, playing in leagues on these ancient tables, shooting pin shots, which is which is what they do. And, and, um, you know, it was, it was awesome. And the competitiveness, there were almost a couple of fights, you know, it was among friends and, and they play each other every week, but it was, uh, it was an amazing night of, of foosball. And, and, you know, and that's the thing you talked about the different venues. Some of them are small, have two tables, others like kicks there in Hamburg have, you know, in, in the teens in terms of tables and in multiple varieties of tables as well. Um, you know, you get every conceivable type of venue, and we've got a chance to kind of look at that today as we as we work our way around the world and hopefully continue to 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 bring the community together and educate the community and, and the differences and the similarities of, of all of us who are involved with this with this great sport. So, um, yeah, what do we have? What are we working now? Do we have another stream? It's great looking in on the South Florida Foosball Club here. Brings back good memories of the Beach Down Beatdown. But what, what else we got uh, brewing here? We got uh, a few other streams potentially coming on board. Nice. Yeah.
Yeah, I know. Traditionally on the West Coast, uh, from my experience of living in California and playing in local tournaments, we never really tended to get underway till about nine o'clock. Um, and so, and I know that, uh, it's just now kind of pushing, uh, 7 PM there in, in California, but, but I, apparently also this is at Trevor Park's house, his legendary house up in the high desert where it, at times I, I think he has five or six or eight tables set up in his house. Uh, so we'll see if he eventually reports in before we go off the air at least. Um, and then I'm also hoping maybe after, after, uh, my shift tonight, so to speak, that to head down to my local venue and, and be a part of this as well with our with our group, the Durango Dragons, um, who are all gather, gathering together down at the garage, uh, it's, it's, which is a, a really neat uh, sports bar here in town uh, for tonight. So, yeah. <clears throat> well, we try to, yeah, and, and we're just sort of getting back into it. But they have two tornado tables uh, set up in, uh, in a very large space with uh, with good music and and uh, I think there are 10 or 12 uh, pool, pool tables in there as well, a ping pong, ping pong table and a stage for, for bands. And, but uh, yeah, two, two uh, well-kept uh, tornado tables on, on site as well. Yeah, yeah. If 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 for the, for those of you um listening and, and watching, um, I want you to Google a man named Lawrence Patterson. He is, in fact, he just passed away. In fact, I was able to uh, to talk about him a little bit at the Bardo ceremony last month. Um, he passed away this past year, but he is the man that, and nobody knows this. And that's I kind of illuminated that in my my brief speech about him down in Austin. But nobody knows about L Lawrence Patterson and how in 1960. Uh, he had he had been overseas, and yes, uh, there had been foosball did begin, and in, in table soccer, table football in Europe did to become more prominent after World War II. Although you can trace its heritage all the way back to post World War One, even. Um, but he brought it over. He said, you know, this is a cool game. I I, I played it on the bases. You know, some of the Americans stationed in Europe uh, played it, uh, in, you know, in Frankfurt and other places. And he he brought that uh, that technology, that early foosball technology, over to the United States. He coined the word foosball. He patented it, uh, copyrighted it, whatever it is, the word foosball with that spelling, F-O-O-S-B-A-L-L, -L, uh, and really was the first one to bring tables over, to stick coin mechanisms on them, place them uh, eventually in bars uh, in the 60s. And then, of course, by the early 70s, it, it really became popular. And eventually, of course, we had the tour. But you can trace it back to early 1960s, very early 60s for for tables initially coming uh, here to uh, North America in the United States. So it's Lawrence Patterson. And, and there's a whole bio on him. Um, if you go online and you, you Google him, Lawrence Patterson Foosball, there's a really well written uh, bio about him and about uh, the history of, uh, of of him bringing foosball to America. Yeah, there would be, and and again, I you know I I've seen tables that go back to the late um, late sixties, um, but yeah, some of those early tables I have not seen those, and that's an interesting point. Um, you know, and I'm trying to remember the name of it. I could I could go and Google it real quick here, I suppose. Um, but um, Yeah, no, no doubt about it. Uh, there have to be. Yeah, here's foosball pioneer Larry Larry Patterson. He was out of Cincinnati, Ohio, uh, and he brought actually his, uh, his first foosball table here in 1962. And um, yeah, as so I read through here, um, yeah, it would be interesting to see if anybody. I mean, you would think that uh, collectors, and there are a lot of them in foosball. Um, you would think that maybe they uh, there would be a market for this, wouldn't there? Uh, for some of those really early tables. And, and once he brought those tables over, you started to see some of the German tables. Deutsche, Me Deutsche Meister tables came over as well in the late 60s, early 70s. In fact, that was one of the first tables I played on uh, in the late in 1970s. Um, and so Deutsche Meister and a few other manufacturers picked it up. But really, it was it was Larry Patterson who created that momentum for, for all of that. Uh, 
uh, moving forward. But like you say, yeah, in, in the in the in the basement in the attic somewhere, there's got to be one of the one of these tables or a couple of them around somewhere. Cincinnati, Cincinnati, Ohio. Yeah, he's from Cincinnati, and uh, I had a chance to meet him. You know, uh, five six years ago, um, in uh, Lexington, in Lexington, which is just an hour or so south of Cincinnati, and he came down as we sort of honored him uh, at a tournament there in Kentucky. Had a chance to meet him and talk to him, and and really, it was. And again, this is a guy that nobody knows about. Nobody realizes this is kind of the man. He is in the foosball, in the American Foosball Hall of Fame, but players today don't really have any idea. So when I saw his name on the list of, of people who had passed in this past year, um, I made sure that I that I if you watch that and it is uh, available at InsideFoos.com, the the Bardo Hearn celebration uh, ceremony is on there, and you watch it. I made sure that that people remember this guy, remember him. And, you know, that's one of the great things about that ceremony is we do get to honor and remember the players who have passed. And in this case, a true uh, foosball pioneer in, in Lawrence Patterson. Well, you know, Larry Lawrence Patterson, of course, in the 60s and then in the 70s, uh, a man named Lee Peppard up in uh, the Pacific Northwest um, saw what was happening with foosball. They were being placed in bars. They were successful. This, of course, was pre video games. Um, and he and he said, you know, th this is a competitive sport. These guys take it seriously. I'm going to create a um, some some tournaments. And he started up in uh, in Montana, and then in 1974 to at Elitch Gardens in Denver for the first ever major tournament, a fifty thousand dollar tournament in 1974, and that was on the tournament soccer table, which was the the tournament, of course, of the million dollar tour when, when the golden era of foosball. But when it when it crashed in 1981, as we've talked about on the radio show and in other places so many times, um, there was a vacuum, and it was picked up initially by Dynamo. Uh, the Dynamo table, which had also been a, a, a somewhat major table, not to the degree of tournament soccer in the 1970s, but it was a, a Texas table that kind of picked it up thanks to Kathy Brainerd um, and company who, who, who had a tour from 1982 through about 1986. And then Dave Currington, um, who is also a, a Foosball Hall of Famer, a great friend out of Texas, really took Tornado, which also was a competitor of Dynamo in the 70s, kind of the... Uh, I, I want to say the minor leagues to some degree compared to tournament soccer, although there were certainly some great tours and great tournaments on those tables. But uh, in 19, about 1986 is when Tornado began to really move to the forefront and become the table. And it was by far the most durable table anyone had ever seen. It was great for the style of play, the post-tournament soccer play. Um so about 1986 is when everything sort of came over to Tornado here in this country. And then, of course, it, it continued to grow into the the second golden era of the, the early 1990s on the Tornado Tour, which is when we got started with Inside Foods. And then, uh, of course, right on to today, where they've continued to improve it. And in many people's opinion, it remains the, the best table that's probably ever been built. Yep. Yeah, no, the it is the heaviest. Now, if, if you look closely at, at the stream here, that center table there, look down there underneath the feet, and you'll see they have some rubber pads underneath those feet. Because when you put a, a any table, no matter what, and especially if it has plastic feet the way the tornado does, um, if you put it on a on a a floor like this, it's going it's going to slide around, even even though it is the heaviest table. But you can see here that you have these pads. Uh, underneath uh, each of the feet that help to keep it in place, and and that is something. Certainly, when we're when we're recording tournaments, when we're working tournaments, uh, we want that table to stay where it is, right? 
Um, but sometimes when you get these big pull shooters, you get these big powerful players, it's going to slide around a little bit. I know that was an issue at the Frog Life Open a little bit. Um, and um, But you can see, you put those rubber pads underneath it, and generally you don't have a problem. Yeah. It is to some degree, um, you know, obviously Spirit Molly's and, and what he's doing down in Texas and creating this both for the tornado and the Leonhardt table. He has them for Leonhardt as well. You know, I've got them on my home table. I have a, a Tornado T3000, an ITSF model from 2009, which we love sitting in the middle of our living room. And there's no way I would have that table in the house without ProtectoFlex. Um, it's just the kids, especially when they're five, six years old, that head is right there at the level. In fact, my son, my son, Kean, one time at a friend's house actually came up close to the table as kids are going to do, right? They don't know. And got, got hit in the side of the head. Yeah. And he got hit with it. And, and it was like, you know, uh, and there's just no way it's, it's such a great addition to any table. It should be an option that can be added onto every table. In fact, maybe it should be mandatory on every table. Um, because of for, for safety for safety reasons. But again, um, protecto-flex.com. Head over there, folks, if you'd like to get your own, because it is a must. And, and take it from Jim Stevens that uh, I wouldn't have a table in my house without it. Yeah, no, for sure. And, and we're, of course, at, at Inside Foods, we're, we're trying to, to push that product because we believe in it. It's as simple as that. I think Adam Gilson is uh, ready to jump back in. Uh, his son must be fed, and hopefully Adam got a little bit to eat as well. Adam, you out there? Yeah, you know, and I got to have some amazing uh, – Mike Archer out of Texas uh, turned me on to these uh, um, chipotle peppers and adobo sauce. You can buy in a can, and you can slow oh. cook. Um brisket or what have you and just have pulled uh, beef tacos and that's what we had for dinner tonight and it was amazing it was no spicy, kidding so you, sweet yeah you Sorry, used the, the canned the canned chipotle peppers okay canned chipotle like peppers it. but then I, you know, I i doctored it up with some tomato sauce and stuff like that you, you have know, to so yeah it's, it's, yeah right but uh, but it was it was amazing you know and, and actually and, and you got to oh, slow cook it that's the key right you, oh oh yeah, yeah yeah and and so it reduces down concentrates the flavors and mm -hmm. um it's just it's just so good it's just the, just the right amount of heat um and the sour cream and the um uh, uh cheese you put on there just oh it's so good i love tacos mm -hmm. Yeah, I do too. But, um, good. but um, Ashley, I just wanted to speak to what you were saying about the ProtectoFlex. As somebody growing up, I grew up in a house with a tournament soccer table. And for those who know, those were solid rods and they were really, really heavy and they hurt. And I had bonked my head on those quite a few times as a kid. And some say that's kind of maybe why I am the way I am could now. Be. Yeah, could be. I'm going with it. I think so. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. that's what my mom says. So I'm going to agree with her. <laughs> So have I, have I missed anything, Jim? What's what's been going on? Oh, we, we had a nice chat with uh, with Sully, of course, and, and of course, if you're mm -hmm. just joining us, we're, we're, we're um, this is of course the the Com Kicker and Let's Foods World Record um, being brought to you by InsideFoods.com. We'd like to thank everybody for joining us. But we had a nice chat with Sully, and then then Ashley came on and proved that she has tremendous uh, potential as a, as a commentator. I think we're nice. going to start work, working her into into the mix here. She is going to be part of the team, and uh, every once in a while, when you and I need to to head over and have some Chipotle tacos in the in the bar, oh yeah, um, we're going to bring Ashley in to do a little commentary. I and I, I the second I met Ashley, I knew this about her that she could do pretty much whatever she wanted to do. I agree. I agree. No, but 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 she sat here and she interviewed me. I thought it was great. Yeah, nice. it, was, it was killer. I know. That's yeah. great. You're in. You're in next week, Ashley. You're in. All right. Along with along with all the other things you're going to be doing. A big um, show. Oh, 
We will see. I mean, your interview skills are, are obvious, but we'll yeah. we'll run you through. You'll have to go through the process as Adam did, and his, his, he had to run the gauntlet and and survive it in order to, to be able to get into the booth. and And good job, Adam, on that. But and of Thank course, you. Ashley, you'll have to go through that process as well. And it's not an easy one. But, um, and, <laughs> so. and Ashley, I think what I like about that is is that you you bring a different perspective. I mean. As somebody that doesn't play foosball, you're kind of on the outside looking in that's learning it from a different perspective. And I just, it's curious to hear, you know, the things that you, you focus on, what you're talking about, and what you're learning. <laughs> that's it, huh? That's all you got. Now, a lot of yeah. people, Adam, don't don't even know that I play foosball. They go, they see me play and they go, geez, Jim, I don't even know you played foosball. And I say, oh, well, yeah, you know, I've been Jim, playing for a while, buddy. Pro what's, player what's for fun? a while. What's funny about that, though, is that that's, you know, what the, the, the persona of the Jim Stevens Foosecaster is, you know, who most of us, myself included, know you as. I think I only played you for the first time in my lifetime about a month ago at Foddy's house in Southern California foosball player. And I had no idea how fast you played. Yeah. Uh, fast. Is that a compliment? Yeah. Well, for okay. me, that's a compliment. I love that style. That's that's what I'm all about. Well, you know, I'm at Foddy's how, house, of course, on a, yeah. at Foddy's house on a Thursday night, Friday night, whatever it was. Um, yeah, yeah, we're going to play fast. We're going to have fun. Yeah, that was a yeah. fun evening at uh, up on, yeah. in the hills of, of Ventura, California. Uh, beautiful view out Foddy's uh, window. I think there's six or eight of us playing that night. That was a lot of fun. Really a lot of fun. And again, Ashley, as we talked about earlier about how we go around the world and we see these different venues, sometimes it is. It's people's house on a Friday or Saturday night. If we can get Trevor Park rolling here, he's got, as we said, six or eight tables set up. Sometimes he'll have 15 or 20 players at his house. Easily. And especially with with COVID, that's kind of where we landed, right? In in many in many cases, we we ended up in people's garages and people's houses, competing as opposed to, to down at the pub or, or 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 you know the uh, the arcade or whatever. Um, and you know, and that's that's kind of neat. And you have those memories, you know. Whenever you come into a town, no matter where you are, you can always find a game. It, it, it's happened to me several times. If they know that that Amy and I are in town. Suddenly, there's six or eight players lining up. We'll right. be there. Let's 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 have an evening. You know, we've done it in Southern California. We've done it in Texas. We've done it in different places, parts of the country. And that's something that I think every foosball player will tell you that when they're traveling around, it's not that hard to find a game. Not that hard to find you know six or eight or ten or twelve or fifteen players in the case of Trevor Park to get together and play for a night. Have a have a few cold IPAs. Enjoy yourself and uh, play some foosball. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And I think if anything, that's what this is reminding us of today, watching this uh, across the globe. And as we move more towards the West Coast, all the different pockets of foosball players everywhere. And I mentioned this, uh, speaking of Trevor Park's house, um, I went down there a couple weeks ago, actually a couple months ago now, before Nationals for a DYP. And uh, they had, that was when uh, uh, Tommy Ackes and his wife, Kathy, were doing right. their sojourn across the country. And I got to talk to them, hang out with them. But, you know, it was there was food, there was friends, there was people. It was just amazing. And it's a, yeah. it's a, it's a great reminder to know that that's the backbone in which I think foosball is really built around. Yeah, there's the co competition. And, yeah, there's the bar scene that a lot of these places by, you know, because of that's how it's always been where we're at. But moving into the 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 the, the home spaces, seeing that evolution to me is the future of foosball. It is. And in, again, this, uh, this event to this 24 hour period here uh, really exemplifies that particular thing. You know, I, I can say, I, I mentioned Southern California and other places that I visited, uh, same thing in Europe. I've been to Europe and I've been to, to Christopher Marx, the great German player. I've got to go to his house and hang out and play a little foosball. Um, you know, it, it's a worldwide thing, no matter where you are, everyone right. kind of considers you a member of, of their family, right? And they will uh, will do everything they can to bring you in, feed you, uh, take care of you, put you up for a night or two if you need it, uh, yep. and obviously play some foosball. And it is something I think a lot of that has to do with with how difficult it is to become a competitive foosball player. What you have to go through, you know, the process of of learning the game, perfecting the game, the tournament style of game. Uh, it kind of bonds all of us, and no matter yeah. where we're from, you know, I, I've I've spoken to the the Olympic Village sort of feeling of these international events and how at the end of the day, after you've competed, y'all get together, right? And no matter the differences in language, the differences in culture, you all have something in common. It's foosball and, and the, the road to becoming a, a top foosball player or a competitive foosball player. And it really does create this, this family, this community, this bonding feeling that really transcends um, where you're from, the language you speak, 
um, even your table style, you know, or, or preference. And uh, it, it's something that I think more than anything ever before this, this year, this event, this week in the Com Kicker and Let's Foos world record attempt really embodies that more than anything. Well, yeah. I, I don't know. If, I don't know if you said this earlier because I had to step away and take care of a technical issue. But this event is also giving us a tool that we can use to find these small groups. Right. That, to your point, um, when you're traveling somewhere, if you do want to find uh, a smaller venue in a new location to just meet up with some new foosball um, players, uh, you can go on this um come kicker and let's foos app and and search for what what might be happening in your area and having this world record and so many people sign up for it um has probably really filled their database well yeah no no question about it and there have been attempts in the past to create apps and to create uh, to ma maps not to, <laughs> unintentionally rhyming there um maps of the world's the locations and venues you know whenever you're you're traveling you know where you can go and to connect and i think uh, the let's foos app the com kicker app is probably doing that uh better than any other ever has and um and hopefully this is kind of a springboard uh, to moving in that direction you know we're all we all spend six or eight hours on our phone every day um, at least I do. And, um, and so, you know, why not, why not connect using, uh, this, uh, amazing technology that we have these days to further, um, build our community. And I think tonight certainly is, uh, is, is that, you know, that, that embodies that as, as much as anything. So let's reframe a little bit what we're talking about, what we're actually seeing here. Um, this is something that we've talked about in, in bits and pieces, Jim, over the last couple of months, but, um, mm -hmm. I've held true to the fact that I don't believe the future of foosball is in bars. It might be in playing in bars, but getting farming out, getting new players to play is not there, I don't think, especially with the advent of the foosball clubs, John O'Brien and the model that we've seen done to a great degree in Europe. And I feel like what we're seeing today, even though it's this great kind of fun, you know, we're hanging out, having a fun time, uh, camaraderie what we're really seeing is a paradigm shift in how we integrate foosball and technology and how we communicate with each other with what we're going to be doing and and i feel like going forward and i don't know how i don't know how it's going to evolve i don't know where it's going to go from here but when when the world becomes that much smaller and there's that much more access and knowledge that you have to share between people that are, would normally never have that chance or ability, um, there's nothing but excitement to my mind. There's nothing but just the, the, the sky is the limit. No, I agree a hundred percent. And and as you said, trying to um trying to build our player base, trying to build our community with pulling people off of bar stools, uh, isn't isn't going to work. You know, you, you really what we need is the club system, which is coming. Uh, obviously, the club system in Germany, where we started this event now, um, what about uh, what eight hours plus ago? Um, you know, th in Germany, there is a club system where there are more than eight hundred clubs. You know, of, of that um, that bring players in. Uh, and teach them to play the right way, um, mm -hmm. give them something to be a part of. It, it's more than just bringing a guy off the bar stool to come play in a weekly right. DYP, you know, and have a few beers. It's more than that. Um, obviously, you mentioned John O'Brien, what he's doing, not now, not just here in this country. John, John O'Brien just today was announced as an executive board member of the ITSF. It's wow. John, John O'Brien is now one of the, the, the true movers and shakers in the world of foosball. Well, good for him. Just here in this country. Yeah. yeah. I know. I talked to him last Deservedly week. And, so. Yeah, absolutely. I, I fully endorsed him. He called me up and said, what do you think, Jim? Should I take this job? And I said, John, it's a no brainer, buddy. You are the man for this job. You know, a great proponent of foosball, not just with the youth, but um, with the tournament scene, with the growth of the sport. He is part of the USTSO uh, as well. A great foosball man. Um, and these are the sorts of things that, that we can begin to build on. And this, of course, is a springboard as well. This is what's happening today uh, that we can begin to build on moving forward. Let's do things a little differently. Let's not rely on 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 pulling people off of bar stools in order to become uh, foosball players. Let's 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 encourage them through the, the use of maybe advertising through table sales, through, of course, what we're trying to do as far as media. Um, with these promos, with these TV shows that you can see on InsideFoos.com, through um, through through what Joe Hesslinga has done with, with foosballers and with the World Cup show on ESPN, let's use all of these things to kind of take it outside the bar. Although, of course, some clubs are still going to be held in taverns. Right. That's part of yeah. it, but that's just that's just the venue. That's just the location. It's yeah. not 
it's different, right? Um, but I think there's there's room now for us to really springboard into the future, coming out of COVID, coming out of um, you know what we've been through the last year and a half, and um, and begin to do this the right way. Life is short, folks. Let's let's do it the right way. Let's not waste time. Let's uh, let's turn people on to what we know is an extraordinary sport, which is good for you. It's good for you mentally. It's fun. It's enjoyable. It's competitive. It teaches you about yourself. You know, I will attest to the fact that foosball is probably, you know, I've, I've called it on the radio show before. I know with you as well, Adam, that it's been my martial art, right? It's our martial yeah. art that teaches us yeah. about ourselves. It gives us, it gives us an exercise to learn about ourselves and to, and to improve ourselves. And I think, you know, through all of these different things that are going on um, around the world, as we continue to shrink the community down and, uh, and, and sort of distill it down to what it is, which is our sport, no matter where you're from, no matter what table you play on, and no matter what language you speak, uh, it's foosball. Right. Absolutely. And, you know, I, to, to speak to that point, because you just said so much and you're really encapsulating so much about where the future of foosball is going, I think. But I just want to clarify, and I think, Jim, I probably speak for you. We're not saying anything negative about the bar scene for foosball or what it does for foosball. It's just as important. But we're talking about the next generation where kids' interests are, where people's interests are as far as I don't believe people – are going to bars as much as they might have been in the 70s or 80s for entertainment when they have Netflix at home or when they have you know their computers at home. I think there's just been a, a huge shift in how that works and how you would farm up newer players. So when we talk about this, it's not to the bar scene, and I think it's still very important for future uh, for foosball in the future. But you know we're looking at. And, and I'm going to hone in on one thing that you said, Jim. You said learning to play foosball the right way. And that's not um, – what, what you're really talking about is, is learning foosball in an environment that is conducive to learning, to taking a step back, to actually educating yourself versus what you might be seeing in, 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 a, in a bar situation. And, and what that really means to me is we're, what we're talking about is fundamentals. And that is huge to developing – a new crop of players and players that that bring um, new and exciting action and, and changes and uh, to to the to the game that we all love because it's it's an evolution it's an evolution of ideas and thoughts and 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 experiences and I think that to that end Jim is super important to learn the right way. Yeah, no question about it, and and, um, and hopefully we're heading in that direction. Uh, if you just joined us, uh, it's Jim Stevens, Adam Gilson, uh, Ashley Lissitra as well. As we're looking in on the South Florida Foosball Club event, uh, Monster DYP. You know, if we could get them to switch the camera over to that table right down there, we could actually do a little play-by-play -play, uh, instead of just looking in at this. And maybe maybe that's something Ashley could facilitate um, by just switching that camera angle because it would give us a little more to talk about uh, as, as well as we wait for other streams to come on board. Uh, we're going to be with you here for um, another hour and a half or so um, as, uh, as uh, we... Uh, Wind things down on a Thursday night before picking them up once again uh, tomorrow morning, quite early, as Mark Torres and Blake Robertson apparently are going to be bringing you coverage from Asia, uh, which generally means either uh, Taiwan, Tokyo, or Malaysia. Um, and I'm thinking tomorrow it's probably going to be uh, a Taiwan. Yeah, let me look but, here, actually. We have, we have, the, we have Taiwan the map. and Hong Kong. And Hong yeah. Kong as well, right. Forgot about Hong Kong. That's the other, that's the other big hotbed. And J Japan as well. And Japan, Looks yeah, like. Tokyo, Tokyo, where they play tornado, Malaysia as well, um, Taiwan uh, and Hong Kong. I think a little bit more of uh, the fireball table, but uh, Tokyo is, and Japan is a tornado uh, stronghold in, in the far east. Although it's you know, really I was, east, I, 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 well, I, I, I don't want to say that. I'm, I'm going to say in no. in uh, in uh, South uh, East Asia. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to agree with you on that. I mean, yeah. we can get into the semantics and everything, but uh, yeah, I, I'm on board with what you're saying there. Mm -hmm. And um, I will say uh, about 12 years ago, I found myself in Japan visiting a friend yeah. and um, we went to uh, the Fuji Rock Festival, which was amazing. Um, it was at the base of Mount Fuji. And, wow. um, and um, I think I don't remember. That's what they called it. It was a long time ago. But the point mm -hmm. is, is that it was the um, a, there was a bunch of amazing performers there and um, Oasis was there two weeks before they f officially broke up. I think this was 2009 uh -huh. or so. Mm -hmm. But um, the point of this is, is that I'm walking around through the, through the mud and the muck and the people. By the way, the cleanest 
rock festival I've ever been to. There was, of course, not, it was. It, yes, yeah, it was amazing. <laughs> it was amazing. Um, I was dirtier than the actual floor than the dirt. Mm-hmm. It was amazing. So, but anyway, you're American. Um, a, you're, you're American, right. Of course you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but there was a, a tornado table just sitting there underneath the tent, wow. just all sitting there by itself in the middle of this, uh, you know, up in the, you know, this mountainous region. I was like, this is amazing. And um, nobody, nobody would play with me, unfortunately. What, did you scare them off? Did you get on there and show your skills? Because we know you have vast no. foosball skills. Adam, actually, folks, is a really good player. Um, but no no one just wanted to play. No one was interested in playing it, foosball. It, it, I'm, I guess I'm the foosball nerd that's there to play foosball in another country that yeah. you're visiting for a rock well, concert. Let's see so. your views of Mount Fuji, up close views of Mount yeah. Fuji, Oasis yeah, up Oasis. on stage, yeah. and then Adam Gilson on the tornado table. Yeah, so what? <laughs> one of these things is not like the other, <laughs> I think is kind of what the takeaway from that was. But yeah, well, as it's we, nice I, to see I think, it everywhere. Yeah, it is. And I think we're going to get a, a switch of a camera here so we could actually maybe commentate a match and have some fun with it. But Adam, I know uh, you're excited about uh, uh, coming to Lexington next week. Oh, as yeah. we're, we're going to be covering the Tornado Championship starting Wednesday at InsideFoos.com. We'll have a single stream up on Wednesday and really get to it on Thursday. I know you're coming in late on Thursday and we're going to yep. sit up there and talk about foosball for, for four and a half really great days there. Talk about your uh, your excitement in, in coming into this event. Well, you know, I haven't been to um, a, a tournament of this caliber in, uh, gosh, I think 2006 is the last Worlds that I was at. And that was when it was still at Dallas-Fort Worth. Um, and I, I remember the energy. As a player, I remember the energy. Um, as somebody that gets to just sit back and watch, because I'm not going to be playing that weekend. I just want to be doing what I've been doing with, you know, up there in the booth the last couple tournaments with you and just kind of take it all in and just observe you know, mm-hmm. what's actually happening. And, and I'll tell you the thing that really gets me, um, that I don't know how to describe it yet. And I'm going to maybe try to see if I can hone in on that one next weekend. But there's a level of expectation at an event like this. Um, there's a level of just, uh, there's just something on your mind when you go to these kind of things. I don't know what it is, but we always talk about <laughs> dialing it up to 11 you know, and I feel like that's what this is. And I just want to see when people's backs are against the wall in this situation, in this biggest stage, what can people do? What can you do? No, no it's so true. And, and this tournament remains uh, in the minds of, of most players and the top players in particular, one of the most prestigious titles. You, you ask Frederick Colignon, what event, what tournament, what title would he, would, does he appreciate above all others? He'll tell you it's a tornado championships. And that's, that's about all you need to hear. Right. Same with Tony. Right. Um, boy, that's a tough angle there. They have moved it. Maybe we can get a higher angle there. Um, I guess we can <laughs> fill in the blanks. I mean, yeah. is that, is that, ta- is that ball going to roll down to the left? It sure looks like it's down. <laughs> I'm um, getting, I'm going to get some drama. mean, but it's so nope. it's so true that um, that the level of play at this event, the level of com- competition, the, how much the the players really value this title. I mean, that's we're talking about from open all the way down to beginner. You, when right. you see these beginners oh, yeah. win this title, they're jumping in it's the huge. air, they're celebrating. Hell, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, oh it's yeah, huge. Yeah. And there's really nothing like it. The only other thing would be the World Cup. Obviously, if Leonhard Worlds uh, in these other World Series events are certainly important to players who play on on those tables. But the level of play, I don't think, I think it's unsurpassed as far as, uh, as yeah. far as uh, the world's foosball tournaments go. I think Tornado Championships gives you the highest level of play of any tournament in the world. And, and it's not just so much the, um, the level of players that are there, because obviously there's really good players, but the brackets are so deep. Yeah. I mean, if you find yourself in the losers, you're, you're as a slog. It's a slog. Oh my goodness! Especially if it's early and you look up and you've got to win, uh, you know, fourteen matches to get back into contention. That's that's a lot. That's no right? joke. So, no, it isn't. Yeah. And we're looking at and, and and I can pretty much guarantee you that there's going to be six hundred plus players at this event. Yeah. It's going to be it's going to be the biggest American tournament in probably yeah. twenty years, uh, I, and and that's what we're looking at. I saw Ryan Moore posting on on Facebook saying that based on the the room reservations he's seen, it's going to be huge. Probably one monster. of the biggest ones ever. Yeah, so it is. Yeah, and and, and, uh, and I've, I've actually just received text from a text from Mary Moore that we are apparently going to have seven pit tables, uh, oh. and there's going to be because they have to fit 90, 90 tables in, into this. Now that you go back twenty years, you go back uh, what what year is this? Twenty five years to the Tornado okay. World Championships in Dallas. Uh, 
Um, and there were one year, I think there were 180 to 200 tables set up in that huge ballroom there at the yeah. Hyatt at, at DFW airport, but 90, 90 is a lot of tables. That is a lot of tables. All right. We've well, yeah. we got a little better view. We have no idea who's playing on the table. Well, but at I least we can somebody, watch a little foosball here. I thought I saw, um, there was a grudge match earlier. I don't know if you heard of, uh, they, each player was playing 50 bucks. It was mm -hmm. Luke and Alex. They were both, um, amateur players. And mm -hmm. I think, I think that's Alex playing uh, uh, on the uh, offensive position on the left. But um, I need to wait a second and see his play for a little bit. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because he's, Luke... he's shooting a Euro pin. A Euro pin. Oh, there you go. That yeah. will differentiate uh, him from others. Oh, that's, that is him. Yeah, that's, that's Alex. That's Alex. He, he's actually from, shockingly enough, he's from Belgium, from what Tommy Brewer said. Ah, okay. Yes, I know who this is then. Yes, I recall him from the beatdown. All right, let's see. He's going to set right. up a, a pin shot. Reminiscent of Frederick Collignon. Yep, there you there see the grip. Is. The grip. And yeah. we're going to assume that was blocked. Tough to commentate from this angle and especially not. Nope. Oh, we'll call, okay. I like oh, wait. it. Okay. We're getting movement. Where's the drama? I like mean? this. This mm -hmm. is good. This is a good warm up for us, Jim. I think so. I mean, we're just... going to be, we're going to be busy. We're going to be doing a lot of, a lot of great matches. No doubt about yeah. it. Of course, we're also going to be joined. Uh, I know Keith Glenn's going to step in and, and do a little bit, and uh, maybe mm -hmm. Jimmy Love as well. There's a couple other members of the Inside Foods team, um, and, uh, and we always get uh, you know folks stepping in. Liz Liz Moore, who was so good at the Bardo, oh yeah, will will be there as well to to do a little bit of commentary with us. There's Alex firing it home to that far side. It's three to something. Three to something. I saw a couple you know, of them slop in at the other end. I'm thinking three to two. Yeah. Oh, and then we had oh, a change. No, four. Four. Okay. okay. Where everybody's confused, mm -hmm. and they can see the table. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you know, it's funny. I've, I've, um, I have never talked to Liz Hill in all the years that I played foosball until mm -hmm. she was in the booth, and it was great working with her. Yeah, she was really good, and she brings a little different perspective. Very good communicator, of course. Very experienced, yep. a Hall of Famer, a multi world champion. In fact, she's going to join us on the radio show on uh, for a, for a brief interview on Sunday night as we kind of focus nice. in on next week's uh, Tornado Championships. Um, and so, um, looking forward to that and, and always, you know, other folks like to join us in the booth, who knows, even Brad Anderson might show up. You never know. Oh, awesome. And, uh, and so that, that'll be a lot of fun. That inside foods booth is going to be the place to be. Make sure you have your VIP pass, uh, provided to you by Adam Gilson, uh, oh, yeah, to, to get up those steps into the booth. <laughs> they're going to the printer tomorrow. Nice. All right. I am excited. Now, uh, I've got mine hanging right here in front of me. I've got it, my, my Bardo one. I, those are yeah. collectibles. I've got a bunch of them. I've got a bunch from throughout the years, from uh, from Europe, from Asia. Oh, nice. look at this. Oh, can we see the score? Oh, it's 4-4. Four, four. Look at that. Okay. Yeah, 4-4. Four, we four, got a match. Might be the first game. Here's the goalie. You see what the goalie's yeah. doing here, leading with when, when they're shooting. Oh, and they're going to a pin. Is that Alex mm -hmm. back there now? I think Alex switched, went to the back. You think so? Okay. Yeah. And here's someone he was, with a... This is a woman. Look at the nails. Is that Dana? Right. Play, perhaps playing forward. I. It's a might woman be, with a, a with an Apple Watch. Dare, and a dare shirt, which Ooh, is I ironic. Like that. That's that's got to be that's got to be Dana. That sounds. Uh, and games must be played to seven because it's now five to. Oh, this is five. their monster. It's five five. Yeah, it's five five. It's a monster DYP. Mm -hmm. So there, yeah. So this must be their. I have uh, only ever done a monster DYP once, Jim, and thoroughly yeah. enjoyed it. I yeah, no, it it's a great, cool. it's a great format. It really is. It, you know, for, for how many years, how many years have we been playing a traditional DYP down at the Pitcher House in Hermosa Beach or wherever? Uh, you know, how many years have we been playing that same old, same old? It's nice to have a something a little different where you, you experience is. a few different partners. So this is Alex up there with the beard, right? Um, no, Alex has got the um, uh, um, um, jeans with the uh, holes in it, I think. I yeah, think because oh, he was know. shooting. Like a, oh no! This is, oh no! This is a snake. No, shot. no, no, yeah. no. Yeah, no. Alex is in the back right now. They switched. All right. Um. Yeah, okay. we were talking about. You know, I can't, can't help myself but talk about fundamentals, and mm -hmm. and I was telling Tommy Brewer that Alex, you should tell him that he's using too much of his lower body when he's shooting. Um, it's an economy of motion is what wins, and uh, you just can't kick. You can't. That's a great point. Knees. Yeah, that's a great point. Of course, if you haven't uh, realized by now, folks, Adam Gilson is a teacher, and that's sort of what he does up in the inside booth. Both now we're going to get a switch, and this is Alex now moving back into the forward position. Let's see how much of his lower body he uses as he sets it up in European uses, style front pin position. Let's uses see here. a lot. 
Yeah, he's getting some leverage with, with a quick no, one he's... here. Blocked this by the goalie. on his right foot. And back the other way and in. 6-5 in favor of the team in black. So we're bringing you action from the South Florida Foosball Club uh, on a Thursday night down in Lake Worth, Florida. This venue about two blocks from the from the ocean. And the inland waterway. Now it's 6-6. Nice. Six, six. I, I was telling Mark, this is tournament. I, I want to go to this next year. Mm-hmm. The beach down beat down. Like so much fun. Yeah, the beach down beat down. From what I recall of it, it was a lot of fun. <laughs> I had those same memories and I wasn't even there. I was just watching mm-hmm. and I'm just like, wow. No, it was a really good, really good tournament. Uh, a lot of players, a great venue, lots to to do down there along the uh, the ocean and the inland waterway. They had us set up in a in a little uh, Airbnb about a block from this venue that was really nice. A quick pick up and score here. Must be one was by out two. There. It's now seven to six. In favor of Alex and his partner. And uh, the forward on the right side. I don't believe that's Dana. Yeah, I don't know. It is a woman based on the nails. I just don't recall Dana's game looking like that as part of but um, Perhaps a less experienced player here. Bringing you action from uh, this event down at the, uh, the South Florida Foosball Club. As we continue to await other potential streams coming through on a Thursday night, now at about uh, 10.30 Eastern Time, and the match is over here. Boy, this is where you want to switch the camera, right? You want to switch it to, to the, See, uh, the large room view. Yeah, just to zoom out. I, you know, um, I don't know. It's, it's fun, though, Jim. Uh, I've, I've been in this commentating game for a very short time, but there's something visceral about this that we're doing right now not just the whole global thing but just like getting down in the trenches and just not being able to see i don't know not even knowing who's really playing i don't know it's just fun to me just to kind of just stretch it your is. legs to some degree yeah yep, for sure it is and it's real it's local it's what foosball is all about right yeah. um because th- this is this is what it's this is this is, these are the legs that hold up the the table of international foosball are these local Ooh. events. That's good. It, yeah. I, I, I didn't wow. really like it. I didn't really like it that much. I'm but so okay. sorry. Well, then I'll, <laughs> I'm going to say, I'm going to pretend I said that because that was nice. <laughs> and because and, and, that's what it's about. It all starts, it starts locally. Um, it looks like we may uh, uh, get um, a guest coming up here. Let's all see. right. Yeah. But you're right. And that was one of the things that I was telling Keith Glenn when we were doing the, the Smashdown was that it has just been a lot of fun doing these remote tournaments and just seeing what's out there. Yeah. People that I would yeah. never have seen. No, for sure. And in, in different styles that maybe you've never seen before, but it is again, it's what supports the, the entire uh, world of foosball are these events that take place on a weekly or bi-weekly basis um, leagues, yeah. uh, tournaments, DYPs, bring your partners, monster DYPs. Um, it, with the, the big picture in mind as well, and maybe that's regional championships coming up in your area or a, a national event or the international events, which we're now starting to, to look at uh, with Landheart Worlds taking place next week. And of course, World Cup uh, now just uh, 10 and a half months away or so. Wow. So, yeah. Um, and there really is nothing like that big international event. Uh, 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 the World Series events are great, but the World Cup and World Championship the presentation is is really magnificent. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Um, watching whatever whatever degree of uh, that I can be involved with that. I just I just I love that. I love that stage. All right, I think we're waiting to perhaps be joined by by Tommy Brewer, um, who is uh, always a lot of fun to talk to. Yeah, he was on a little bit earlier when Sullivan and Mark were here, and um, mm-hmm. that, that was a he's a hoot and a half. I'll tell you what, I got to meet him uh, at Bardo for the first time. Yeah, and now we're we're about two hours later. He could be maybe a, a, at least two and a half hoots. Um, <laughs> three three hoots to the wind. If, <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> we'll see where it takes us. I guess. Mm-hmm. But um, so, 
Well, we hope everybody's enjoying our coverage of the uh, the world record, a 24-hour period of foosball that basically follows the sun around the world uh, from uh, local venue to local venue as we try to set a, a new wor- a record, a, a record that will never be broken, at least until next year. Uh, right. and, uh, and it also gives Adam and I a chance to get together and chat a little bit as we anticipate uh, working together for a, a, a high number of hours next week. Yeah, that's going to be something else. I um, I've been thinking, you know, I was talking to Sullivan about how she prepares for uh, yeah. a tournament of that caliber, but I was thinking, how would I prepare for having to talk for so much? And I know that sounds silly, but it's like, you know, that's a lot of talking, Jim. What do you do? It is, a, it is a lot of talking. I just do it, right? I just do wow. it. And maybe because I've sort of built up my stamina for that over the years, it's it. Yeah, you just do it, right? You just open your mouth and talk. Um, obviously, you want to take care of the pipes a little bit, you know, whatever that means, whether it's cough drops, whether it's just keeping yourself hydrated is a big part of it. Mm. Um, getting getting sleep because sleep certainly can uh, can be, can be uh, you know detrimental to to, to right. the voice. Um, so yeah. all of these things, just making sure you take care of your body, take care of your uh, yourself, make sure you eat, make sure you sleep, make sure you you hydrate, and uh, and you'll be fine. Uh, I'll tell so. you one thing I'll never do again is have uh, Denny's at two in the morning. Yeah. That was yes, a you know, hard <laughs> lesson to learn at Bargo, <laughs> but I will not soon forget that. Oh, hard lesson, yes, a loose it lesson, is, um, for but, sure. Uh, yeah. A loose lesson. <laughs> okay, but I will tell you that Moons Over Miami still does call my name. It, you know what? Here's the problem. Here's the problem, buddy. You know, a, a, literally half a block from the venue, there's a Denny's next week. Oh, really? Half a well, block. Well, that's. Okay. Well, let's see if I go there before two. It's fine. Huh? Yes. No, yeah. I usually I do go there. I end up going there a, a couple of times during the course of uh, of that long weekend and uh, for a breakfast or whatever. And, right. You know, you get you, you, generally they do clean those grills once or twice a year. That's uh, always hey, the. It, con- hey, wait a minute. Is this? Is, Uh-oh. Tommy. Tommy, are you here? Hey, can you guys hear me? I can yeah. hear you. What's up, How's buddy? Good man. Jim and Adam with you. Ah, uh-huh. nice. Hi again, How Adam. Our, hey, our things, yeah. Th- thanks for uh, putting the, the the camera on the table so we can watch it as we wait for other streams to to kind of uh, join us. Uh, we have no idea who's playing on these tables, but it's fun at least to watch a little foosball. But because we did think- sit there, yeah. Go ahead. Oh yeah, I think that's uh, Matt Kleinsmith and Alex Jack just messing around with some single stuff. But I could be wrong. Uh, Looks like a match is starting now. Um, okay. I see. I see a PBR in the background, so things are getting serious. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. No, yes. That's, that's, um, they put that on special for us when we have foosball tournaments. So is that is I that your lovely our... wife? Maybe your lovely wife is potentially about to play on that table. Maybe, yeah, she might be up. Oh, I cool. uh, okay, there we go. We'll see. I actually yeah. can't be inside. It's chaotic and loud. They, and it, they made you go out. Oh, it's too loud. It's, no, it's it's too loud. Yeah. I couldn't hear you. You, so, you couldn't hear me. You just hear so, Katy Perry songs at volume ten. Oh well, go back inside. <laughs> I love Katy. So Tommy, Tommy, I'm curious. Like, do people know what? I mean, I know this is your your Thursday night monster DYP or draw, but I mean, do people know what they're a part of right now? Do they like? What's the word on the street down there? Yeah, most people. Uh, most people interact with our page a lot, and we've been posting about it. So, yes. The shorter there are some uh, older players who don't are online or anything like that, and so we had to tell them what's going on. But they're they're pretty stoked about it. Yeah, cool. and for me, of course, getting to getting to look in here brings me back about two months to when we were down there covering the Beach Town beatdown. What a blast that was! And uh, I can I can kind of look at this and sort of feel it. Step outside the bar and certainly feel the the humidity uh, as well. <laughs> it's um, still here. Yeah. It, it looks like the air conditioning might be working, which is good. Um, but no, it was it was such a great time and you know, coming down there to to cover that event to, now two months ago seems like only yesterday. Does, um, yeah. But um, getting getting to reminisce a little bit about it has been a lot of fun tonight. Yeah, I get to relive it every week. It's great. Yeah, you do. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that sounded sarcastic. It wasn't. <laughs> like that's, that's, <laughs> it was, but it like, wasn't. Yeah. Yeah, the, the beatdown is kind of a microcosm of what our weekly tournaments are like. Like it is just a, a pretty fun atmosphere. Um, it, it, it's, it's somebody it's somebody who has been around uh, the game now for just two or three, four years, whatever it is for you. Um, you know, what this this event this Com Kicker and Let's Foos world record attempt, what it kind of does is it really brings the community worldwide together, doesn't it? It kind of gets us all focused on on a similar goal, kind of really it, it brings to the surface 
what is so awesome about foosball, and that is the community, the family side of it. Um, talk a little bit about that. Yeah, I mean, it has been good. Um, I guess it's probably most apparent to us because we travel, or Dana and I like to travel a lot, less so now that we have a two-year-old. But before that, you know, we would kind of jet set all over the place. And she would she went to Spain and uh, found people that we knew from foosball there and was able to make a whole bunch of new friends and uh, kind of connect. Um, and, you know, the two of us went to uh, England a while back and went to Manchester and played at Morris Athos tournament and Bristol and played at the tournament they have there. And it was just, it was great to, like, you know that you have a welcome party wherever you're going. Um, and there is kind of a fellowship in it, right? Like, it's something yep. more than a game. <laughs> um, but yeah, that, that, that's what struck me uh, most about the community is whatever city I go, not every city, but wherever I go, within usually about an hour, there's a tournament. And I know that there are gonna be, there's going to be people I can hang out with and play a game I like and people I can get to know and connect with. Yeah, you know, for sure. And I, and I, of course, I talked about that about a half hour or so ago, the, my experiences internationally and getting to, you know, and, and there's always somebody who will put you up or, or get a, a, a you know, get together for that night of, of friends. You know, anytime Amy and I head to Southern California, we know we just make a phone call and there's going to be eight or 10 players getting together at somebody's house to play. Um, you know, when you travel, if you need a place to stay, it's always there. Yes. And it's, there's, you're going to, you're going to find a couch if you need it. You are going to find a couch. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully it folds out into a bed. Um, oftentimes, but, um, but no, that's, that's part of what makes this kind of event so cool is that we are getting to, to peek in on, on, on venues around the world, on cultures around the world and, and, uh, and, and how much we have in common despite our differences. Yep. Yeah, I agree. I'm, I'm actually really looking forward to, uh, once it's all said and done and up, uh, posted on the website, scrolling through and waiting until I see, okay, there's a different kind of table. I wonder where this is at. Um, yeah. Yeah. I wonder what these guys are doing and seeing the different styles of play uh, and, and the similar ones, too. But, yeah, yeah it's going yeah. yeah. to be an interesting watch. No, it is. As we sort of follow the sun around the world uh, to these different venues. Now, you're getting ready to, to head up to, to Kentucky next week, I assume, um, for the Tornado Championships. Uh, any extra preparations for that event or just uh, kind of business as usual for you? Business as usual. So I'm a high school teacher, and we just had our first week of school. So yeah, I've been you know pedal to the metal on lesson planning and that sort of thing. But I did get to play some foosball at school today. We have a table in a foosball club. So nice. Yeah, yeah I did. I guess I guess that's practice. Dane is well way more prepared than I am. I haven't been. Now, did you, did, did you do you dominate? Mind. Do you dominate at school? Do you, do you take these kids and, and slap them down pretty regularly? Yeah, I mean, I, you can't you can't show weakness to a high schooler. No. They'll they'll yeah they sense it. They do get a uh, uh, hundred dollars if they can beat me. Um, hundred dollars, yeah. And you have yet to pay out, I'm assuming. I have yet to pay out. It's three years running, and uh, it hasn't happened yet. <laughs> it's gonna happen at some point, buddy. It's gonna happen, and and you kind of hope it does, right? I do. Yeah. No. Yes. Yes, and no. Not because of the hundred dollars. I just don't want to uh, exercise that kind of humility. Uh, no. <laughs> they think you're a god, man. They think you are a god. There's no doubt about it. Yes, um, a god so, among nerds, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So, are, are you still uh, the, the monster DYP is still going on? You're you're still playing. How are you doing so far? Uh, so far so good. I lost my first one and then one two, and we'll see how it goes from there. We generally take the. Uh, I think we have twenty five people out tonight. Maybe nice. maybe a couple more. Um, wow. and we'll end up taking the top eight and making finals out of it. I think I'm around six or seven right now, which I'm. I don't so want to did get, you get on. Did you get on the Let's Foos app and 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 report your twenty five uh, players for tonight? Is I are you part of that fourteen hundred plus? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I um, delegated all of the technological responsibilities to my um, my superiors mm -hmm. in that <laughs> realm. Mm -hmm. Luke, I would Luke's dropped. handling it. Luke's handling yeah, it. Yeah, Luke and some uh -huh. others. I would have dropped the ball immediately. Like it'd yeah. be, like, we would have a blackout or something. <laughs> would not have yeah. gone smoothly no because that means the air conditioning goes down and every half the people there would, would probably uh, at least pass out if not die yeah um, i mean and, and, that's so, in real quick here yeah so no blackouts allowed all right man we'll, we'll let you get back at it we appreciate you joining us and uh and, and we'll see you next week looking forward to seeing you man let's uh, let's oh, have a cold man. one together gotta be great to see everyone yes yes the red breast is amy coming 
And Amy is not coming, but that may okay. not stop us from having a red breast. We will drink the whiskey then. All right, bud. Take care, man. Bye. We'll talk bye, to you. Bye, Adam. All right, bud. All right, that was uh, that was Tommy Brewer, the, the great Tommy Brewer out of the South Florida Foosball Club, a guy that we, we certainly really enjoy, a guy that has been so good and has injected energy not only into the state of Florida, South Florida in particular, but into into the sport of foosball here in the United States as well. If you don't know Tommy, just walk up, find that uh, ugly, dirty hat that he wears, walk up, introduce yourself, and you'll, uh, you'll be glad you did. Uh, this is a great foosball man and a, and, a, and a great conversationalist as well. All right, so we're, we're checking in here at South Florida Fo Foosball Club action. Um, I'm going to step away for about three minutes, and Adam is going to join us again here as we continue our coverage of uh, Com Kickern, Let's Foos World Record Attempt here at InsideFoos.com. And don't forget to join us. Uh, if you don't have a subscription to Inside Foos, go get one. We have uh, more than 1,000 videos. Uh, original content, of course, live coverage. We'll be covering both um, Tornado Championships and Leonhardt World Series next week. Um, and, uh, and well worth uh, the, the, the minimal investment in, uh, in, in, if you're a big foosball fan, you've got to get an Inside Foos subscription. So, um, all right, I'll take a short break. We'll be back with you here in about uh, five minutes.
Yeah, if you've just joined us, you're watching uh, live action from the South Florida Foosball Club as we continue to bring you live coverage of the Com Kicker. Let's Foos world record attempt.
All right, as we wind things down on a uh, Thursday night, a little past 11 o'clock Eastern time, we've got some uh, numbers for you that we're sitting at as we head into tomorrow. Still some action to take place on on the West Coast of America. Still some tournaments going on uh, But uh, as of now, Adam Gilson, you with us? I'm here. As of now, it looks like we are at uh, 1,266 players uh, and 168. Um, is that uh, different venues? Yep, different venues. That's amazing. Yeah. And I imagine yeah. that's got to be a little bit, if they adjust and see how many actually people are there, I think those were estimates. Those weren't actual, the numbers of people that have been there. And watching the streams throughout the day, there's been a lot of people participating. This has been an amazing thing to be involved in, Jim. Yeah, it really has. And again, we've talked about it tonight, how important these sorts of things are as we move forward and continue to build the community. Uh, and, and I think over the last year and a half, we have seen just how strong that community is when there were no tournaments for um, quite a long time anywhere in the world. Um, for the most part, players still stayed engaged, whether it was uh, through what we're doing at uh, Inside Foos or just social media in general. Um, but it really bodes well for as we move into the future, as tournaments resume, as we get back into a rhythm of competitive foosball around the world, uh, and as we continue to really focus in on growth, which I know the ITSF is, we are here at Inside Foos as well, uh, as we continue to, to focus on growth and, and just improving the product, improving uh, uh, the environment of, uh, and the ability to, to compete or just play for fun uh, as we move forward. And uh, this event uh, through this first day, and of course, it'll continue again uh, quite early tomorrow morning. You can uh, come to InsideFoods.com. Mark Torres and Blake Robertson will be hosting some action from uh, Asia as, uh, as we move to that part of the world uh, with uh, the Com Kicker and Let's Foods a world record attempt. So... Uh, some final thoughts from you. Well, for one thing, I've got my alarm set because I want to hear Blake and uh, uh, Mark and see what th they can come up with. Because um, I, I heard Blake's interview um, with uh, uh, Clay Toomey a couple weeks ago on in, uh, Spoos Talk Live, and that was phenomenal. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I'm curious, you know, to kind of see what what he and Mark do. And you know, if anything, um, I just I just keep saying this, but it's what a time to be alive in foosball and be involved in foosball. We've got things like this going on. The Tornado Championships next week. I mean, there's just so much to, to think about and do. It's just amazing. Yeah, it really is. And it's a, it's a great time of the year as we head into these two big, huge events coming up uh, next week. And then, of course, more events to follow. Uh, you know, with the World Cup coming up uh, next July, we're having to condense everything down to, to qualify players. Um, and uh, it's exciting to, to think about, uh, as you said, it's a great time to be alive in foosball with all these great events and with the things that are happening, with so many different uh, levels to the, all of this that are occurring yeah. internationally. And uh, again, exemplified uh, to the nth degree here with this, uh, with this great world record attempt. Yep. And uh, special thanks to everybody out there that's been with us in and out throughout the day. And uh, Tommy Brewer and the uh, South Florida foosball club and anybody else we've been seeing. And also uh, Sullivan Rue for popping in earlier. That was great to have her in here. Yeah, it really was. It was great. She's just such a, a great young lady, and boy, what a player she is. So uh, quick quick note out to Ashley. Ashley, are we going to keep the streams up for a little bit? Uh, Adam and I, I think, are going to sign off, but uh, I think we're probably going to shut things down here. It's been a long day here at Inside Foos. And then uh, just don't forget, folks, to join us again early uh, tomorrow. And by early, um, I'm, I guess I'm talking, what, about uh, – what did Mark say? He was going to be on the air like at 6.45 a.m., something like that? Yeah, it was – yeah, I think it's 6.45 a.m. His – yeah, so – 7 7.45 Eastern time yeah, as we get things – Yeah, 7.45 Eastern, yeah. Yeah, as we get things going in Asia. And then and then uh, build towards um, – yeah, Mark, Mark, 8, 8 a.m. Central time is what he's saying. So uh, as we get things uh, moving over towards Asia – and then begin to, to wind things down with this uh, the great event. Well, a lot of fun working with you, Adam. Ashley, yep. uh, you as well. And um, and so, um, but those numbers are encouraging for sure. So yeah, I hope you've all enjoyed our coverage, folks. Yep. Thank you all. Thanks, Jim. Thanks, Ashley.
Oh, just to pop back in, if you're still live and out there watching, this is the semifinals right now for the South Florida Football Club. On the right is Tommy and Matthew, and on the left is Luke and John. Tommy and Matthew have to score nine points to win, and Luke and John have to score seven points. For those who are still watching. 